Save up to 10320 on select models. The following is a special holiday presentation of ESPN on ABC. A blue blood battle to kick off a brand new day. Two of the top four winningest programs in college football history. A combined 38 national championships. You just won the national championship. Yeah. Alabama is the king of college football. Two of the biggest names in coaching at schools known for legendary figures who roamed the sidelines past. Heisman Trophy winners. Some of the game's greatest personalities. Hail to the victors. Roll Tide. Just the fifth ever meet between two iconic programs that have been playing football for well over 100 years. It's Michigan and Alabama on New Year's Day. Oh, can't sell me now! Next. Welcome to the Verbo Citrus Bowl on ABC as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. College football royalty on a 70-degree New Year's Day in Orlando as two iconic programs, Alabama and Michigan, meet for just the fifth time. Two centuries worth of history packaged on the field in a pair of top 15 teams. Alabama trying to get its 11th win, Michigan going for its 10th. Nearly 2,000 combined wins between these Blue Blood programs. In the whole era, 14 national titles combined, a handful of Heisman Trophy winners, and a ton of first-round draft picks. And hi, everybody. Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, and Tom Lugan. We welcome you to the booth. It's the first game of a new decade. And outside of the college football playoff games, Greg, it's probably the most anticipated matchup because of who playing. We're down on the field before the game. We turn one way, there's Alabama. Turn the next way, it's Michigan. It's great to see the two teams meeting today. It's an all-world helmet game on a college football holiday. It's New Year's Day, fresh start. Both these teams looking to finish their season on a high note. And you look to the left, there's the crimson and white. You look to the right, there's the maize and blue. It doesn't get any better. It's college football royalty on display. Meanwhile, the biggest story today in college football is the injury to Tua Tonga by low of the quarterback for Alabama. Uh, he is here today, but uh, not playing, obviously, with a season-ending injury against Mississippi State on November 16th. He was hurt earlier in the year with an ankle injury, but this one ended his campaign and might end his Alabama career. He has to make a decision on whether he's going to go to the NFL soon, but he has not made that decision just yet. So with Tonga Bailo obviously out, Mac Jones makes his a fourth start of the season. How do you think he's played so far? Well, filling to his shoes is impossible, and he has done a remarkable job of giving his team a chance. Obviously, the first couple games against low-level competition, he torched them. But when he went against Auburn, made a couple mistakes, but the big thing was how he responded to those mistakes. You have to be impressed with his accuracy. You have to be impressed with how he's handled the circumstances and his understanding of the playbook. Remember, he was signed to the same recruiting class as Tua Tonga Balo. So he was an afterthought, a developmental prospect that knew he'd get a chance to compete eventually and has made the most of that chance so far this year. All right, Greg, a couple of key players for Alabama electing not to play in this game on defense. Starters Terrell Lewis and Trayvon Diggs. But most of the big guns going for both teams, including the quarterback from Michigan, Shea Patterson, is playing maybe top his best football right now. Well, I certainly think he is, Dave. And it's really been a tale of two halves of a season for Michigan quarterback Shea Patterson. The first half of the season... Riddled with turnovers, inconsistent play, was a little bit banged up, but the last six weeks of this season for Michigan, Shea Patterson has played his best football of his career. He's protected the football. He's anticipated. He's made the right plays at the right time, and he's going to have to protect the ball and beat his best today if Michigan hopes to get a win versus Alabama. All right, Tom, two archetype college football programs kick off a new year from Orlando. It's the Wolverines and the Tide next. It can You're watching Capital One Bowl Mania. 
And welcome back to Camping World Stadium. The Verbo Citrus Bowl, number 14, Michigan, 13th ranked Alabama. The Wolverines trying for the 10th win to be the fourth time in the last five years. And if Alabama wins, it would be the 11th or ninth straight win, uh, ninth straight season round with 11 wins. As you look at the six time national champ, five at Alabama on the right, and Jim Harbaugh's record at Michigan, but he's lost the last three bowl games, including a 41 15 drubbing against Florida in the Peach Bowl a year ago. Alabama won the toss and deferred. So Michigan will get the ball first. Giles Jackson, who does have a return for a touchdown, is deep for Michigan. A packed house, the end of the season, but a new decade of college football about to kick off. And here we go. Bullivis booting it deep, and Jackson slipping. And still did pretty well. Got past the 25. Reversing field. And Henry Ruggs, who might be the fastest guy in the country, was able to track him down in midfield. He still returned at 51 yards. What a great way to start this game for Michigan. Slipping on the return, but being able to establish that far boundary. And Josh Jackson, the explosive freshman. You see some of that speed on display. And the athleticism that he has, a great shot, too, by that Michigan Wolverines kickoff return. You know, it's been a long way off, so it's a great way to start to create some momentum for your offense to get this Verbo Citrus Bowl underway. And if that was anybody other than uh, Henry Ruggs for Alabama, maybe Jackson's able to get around him and score. And Shea Patterson... Quarterback for Michigan throwing downfield on the first play and it's incomplete through the hands of Nico Collins. Couldn't hang on to it. Josh Job is replacing Trayvon Diggs, who's sitting out the year was in cover, sitting out the game was in coverage. You look at the Patterson, his numbers for his career at Michigan after transferring from Ole Miss. He's got a lot of accuracy, and like Tom referenced, he has been playing his best football of late. I thought the Ohio State game was one of the best of his career, the accuracy he showed. Michigan lost that thing though, 56 27. Peoples Jones. And not much there. Run out of play by Anthony Jennings. A gain of a couple. So it's going to be third and long for Patterson. And Michigan adjusted their offense in the offseason. Went down to Alabama and hired Josh Gaddis, their offensive coordinator. And they've tried to implement more tempo, more RPO, more passing game friendly aspects for Shea Patterson. He's responded beautifully after what was bit of a rocky start in the first half of the season. Third team all Big Ten quarterback. His pass to Collins was off the mark. Otherwise, Collins might still be running. Again, they went at Job, who started the season opener against Duke, had a hand injury midseason. Sophomore out of Miami in coverage. Clearly trying to attack Job, like he referenced, who's in for Trayvon Diggs. It's a good release there by Collins. So far, Jay Patterson just a little bit off with some of those deep throws down the right sideline. And Jalen Waddell, who is one of the most explosive and exciting players to watch every time he touches the football, he had four touchdowns against Auburn. This one checks up and will be down by Michigan at the 16-yard line. Alabama, a 10-2 record. They started 8-0 before losing to LSU, 46-41. And then, of course, the injury to Tua. November 16th at Mississippi State, gone for the season. Maybe his career at Alabama is over. His football career, though, he's got a lot of football ahead of him. They lost the Iron Bowl because of some pick sixes to finish with two regular season losses for the first time in nine years. But in talking with Miss Saban yesterday, he said, we're pretty ticked off about the way the season ended. And he expects his team to play very well today and play with a lot of intensity. And Matt Jones going downtown here on the first play to Judy. And there he goes. Goodbye, Jerry Judy. 85-yard touchdown. receiver in college football. He won the Blitnikoff last year. 
and he might be playing his final game at Alabama. Could go pro. He's a junior. And look at that number. 33 straight wins when they score a touchdown on their opening drive. I wonder what it is when they score on the opening play up from scrimmage. Seven nothing, Alabama. Well, it's been a while since we've seen the Crimson Tide. But clearly, the offense has not missed a beat. One-on-one -on -one coverage against the true freshman and Jerry Judy to the house on the post route off the beautiful throw from Mac Jones. And the Crimson Tide starting strong here in Orlando. There's all 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. Alabama scores on the opening play because of this heavy play action look and the vision right now by Glasgow. Looking in the backfield allows for one-on-one -on -one coverage against the true freshman. Daxton Hill and Jerry Judy's going to win that every single time. That's a great job by Steve Sarkeesian game planning the look throughout the course of the last few weeks. Finding a big hitter early, an excellent throw and catch by Mac Jones and Jerry Judy. Well, and Dave, you, you talked about how he may be very well the best receiver in college football. I think without question, he's the best route runner in college football. Well, and going back to that Auburn game, we talked about the pick sixes, but uh, Mac Jones also threw four touchdowns in that game. He's played well, and that was an excellent throw as well to Judy. Charles Jackson had a 51-yard return last time he touched it, but not this time. He's knocked down at the 19-yard line by Job. So Michigan winning nine games for the fourth time in five years under Jim Harbaugh. All three losses were against ranked teams. They lost big at Wisconsin and against Ohio State. Came back against Penn State to make that game. Lost by just a touchdown to the Indy Lions. But they've lost 19 straight road or neutral games against AP top 15 teams. In fact, their last win was here on this field in 2008. At the time called the Cavill One Bowl. Jay Patterson over the middle. It's caught at the 27-yard line by Jackson. I know Michigan fans are frustrated with the performance defensively a few different times this year, but if you look at the Ohio State game closely, it, it felt a little closer than the score might indicate. A couple drop passes in the second half, a couple mistakes there early in the first half in the red zone with drop pass and a fumbled snap. So I know 9-3 and three is not necessarily what you're looking for, and you obviously want to beat your rival, but this Michigan team is excellent. On second and three, but a hand it off here, and the first down for Haskins, spun to the ground by Christian Harris. Haskins has had a couple of big games, a buck 49 on the ground against Notre Dame, 125 yards at Illinois, and a tough game where the Illini came back and needed those yards from Haskins down the stretch. Yeah, it reminds me of T.J. Yeldon from Alabama. A little taller, has really good side-to-side -side quickness and some nice acceleration through the hole. Interesting, guys. Uh, Michigan trying to up the tempo here, but they're substituting, which is giving Alabama a chance to get the right personnel on the field. First down for Michigan on the 30-yard line. will run it to Jackson. Maybe a couple. Alabama's run defense was not very good this year. They gave up 135 yards a game, most in the last 20 years for the Crimson Tide. And you saw those gaudy numbers in terms of points allowed in their two losses to LSU and Auburn. Michigan's offense not great. We'll see if they can buy the test today. Patterson going down the sideline incomplete. He was trying to hit Sean McHugh in the tight end. So third down and seven now. And one thing that I think Michigan needs to do throughout the course of this game is find opportunities for their tight end. That time, Xavier McKinney all over it, recognizing that McHugh is a huge part of this offensive plan. But on third down, it's really important to try to find opportunities for Ronnie Bell, their slot receiver, who's a real big mismatch in one-on-one -on -one coverage against the slot players for Alabama. And they got Job right now lined up against him. They've already targeted him twice deep down the field on the number three receiver there, number eight in the slot. And there's Ronnie Bell with corner over. It indicates make coverage. Patterson in trouble, gets rid of the pass, and it's incomplete. A diving try by Bell could not come up with it. And so Michigan's going to have to kick it right back to Bama. 
It's a really nice route from Ronnie Bell. Throw just a little bit off the mark. See the pressure from Alabama bringing six. Patterson knows he has to get rid of the ball on time. It's a little bit too far out in front and a little low, but clearly trying to take advantage of that matchup. Ronnie Bell working against corner in the slot is something that Michigan's going to try to do all day. Will hard on to boot it away for the Wolverines. And again, Jalen Waddle is deep. Well, that's one way to keep it away from Waddle. Takes Michigan bounce down to about the 30 yard line, only a 37 yard punt. Mac Jones, Richard Sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. Four star recruit, the number 17 ranked pocket passer in the class of 2017. And again, making his fourth career start. He's played in 26 games since the beginning of last season, but most of those as the holder. And again, when Tua Tungabailova uh, had that ankle injury earlier in the season, he started against Arkansas. And then when Tua got hurt against Mississippi State with a season end hip injury, he became the full time guy. And that pass on the money to Devontae Smith. And it's a first down out to the 46 yard line. So it's not just a, uh, that he's got Jerry Judy, he's got Smith, Waddle, and Ruggs. So excellent receiving core to work with for Mac Jones. Unbelievable supporting cast. I mean, they go four deep at wide receiver, and of course, two deep at running back with Najee Harris and Waddle. From the 46 yard line, they're going to run Harris here. And he gets maybe two yards brought down by Andrew Thomas. So I know he had the turnovers against Auburn, but still made some big plays. And in talking with Steve Sarkeesian yesterday, the offensive coordinator, he said the players really watched Mac Jones and how he responded from those mistakes. And he won a lot of guys over with the way he handled himself. Played with toughness and bounced back from those catastrophic mistakes. Didn't let them dwindle. On second and eight, Jones going to throw it to Ruggs here out in space. And a short game, maybe one. Metellus on the takedown. I think what you have to appreciate most about Mac Jones, Luke, is the fact that he was willing to sign up in the same recruiting class as Tua Tungabailoa and said, you know what, I'm not going to play early, but I'm going to work on my craft and become a better player. So down the road as a redshirt sophomore or junior, I'm going to compete to win the job. You have to appreciate that approach, Tom. That, that, and he's so smart, he's so competitive, and he's willing to bide his time and earn it. And that's what he's done, and that's why he's had success, because he's prepared properly. Let's see how he does here on third down and six only a three-man rush and the pass is knocked away incomplete Levert Hill stepping in front of Ruggs and it's fourth and six and Levert Hill does a great job of playing the quarterback's eyes you look at that helmet looking inside he's responsible for any flat defender and as soon as the receiver breaks on the five-yard out route he has to close on it. That's a great job by Lavert Hill coming up, making a play on the football, and impacting the throw and catch. Lavert Hill is not very big at only 5'11, but if he was 6'1 or 6'2, he'd be a first round pick. I love his cover skills, and I love his instincts on the perimeter. First team All Big Ten last year and this year, a senior from Detroit. Alabama had all kinds of confusion there. Delay a game, offense. Five-yard penalty, so fourth down. We only had ten guys on the field at one point. Eleventh guy came on late. And these are the things you deal with in a bowl game. Long layoff, substitutions are a little trickier. You're not a well-oiled machine the same way you usually are at the end of the regular season. So making sure you focus on the details, substitution, snap count, the little things. It's like an opener, Greg. It really is. It really, it's like yeah. starting the season all over again. Yeah. New year, new team. Number 98, Mike Vernier on the punt. And it's a line drive. Peoples Jones has it on the 16 yard line, but nowhere to go as he is dropped. How about Vontae Smith, starting wide receiver as the gunner making the tackle on special teams? You have a. The Verbo Citrus Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Verbo.
Verbo was giving away a $5,000 travel credit for a Maui vacation. No purchase necessary. U.S. residents 18 and older only. For rules and entry, visit Verbo.com slash win. And in part by Lexus. Experience amazing. Full week, part of the activities for all the players being involved in community activities, playing video games with children from the Orlando area. Greg, you've obviously been a part of those and been a part of them here, having played in this game when you were at Alabama. And that's the best part about bowl games that you never see is the impact on the community. Being able to interact and go to the children's hospital to interact with people, in some cases do football clinics for underprivileged privileged youth. It's just, it's really, really special. It's a celebration of football. and. For those seniors, you'll remember this bowl trip for the rest of your life, like I do. So first down for Michigan on its 15-yard line. And it's Charbonnet through a crease at a 20-yard line, and it's a first down for the true freshman running back. Well, final game at Michigan for Shea Patterson, who played at IMG Academy in this state. Five-star recruit after being the 2015 Elite 11 MVP. Two years at Ole Miss. Started 10 games for the Rebels and transferred to Michigan. And right now, he's eighth all-time in Michigan history, and he sits just 14 yards away from passing his head coach, Jim Harbaugh. Played from 83 to 86 at Michigan and moving into seventh place. Coach Harbaugh's so competitive. Is he just going to say, run the ball the rest of the day? You know? <laughs> <laughs> i got to beat my quarterback as far as total yardage is concerned. Patterson to throw here. And it's broken up. Incomplete intended for Collins and Christian Harris the true freshman linebacker in coverage made the play for Alabama You know what Greg? That's that's the matchup Michigan would like to have a receiver versus a linebacker a true freshman linebacker and the linebacker makes the play And an injured Alabama player can't see the number just yet It's Josh Job back in a moment Live February 9th on ABC. Josh Joe, a backup usually, but starting because Trayvon Diggs electing not to play in this game. And he got hurt a moment ago. Looks to be all right. Yeah, a little bit of friendly fire as they were running the crossing route. They were trying to pass and run all the way through it. And you see him collide right there in the middle of your screen with Sertan. Kind of awkwardly colliding. And Job was able to walk off under his own power, so hopefully he'll be able to return to the game sooner than later. And Jalen Armour Davis takes his spot there on the perimeter down at the bottom of your screen. And he's a redshirt freshman on Mobile, Alabama. And Michigan get to run the ball here. And Charbonnet close to a first down, dragged down by Christian Harris. So Alabama already was playing a lot of young guys. That's kind of how it's been all year. Dylan Moses tore his ACL starting linebackers Charbonnet runs right at the linebackers and up near midfield but good news for uh, Alabama fans Moses announced this week he's going to come back to Alabama next year he was expected to be a guy that would get drafted maybe even in the first round but he's come back to Alabama but they missed him LeBron Ray is another guy they haven't had DJ Dale up front without him today and Terrell Lewis as we mentioned and Trayvon Diggs are both sitting out this game as you look at Pete Golding the defensive coordinator yeah, he's had his hands full and just making sure that the freshman players and in some cases there's as many as five or six on the field at a time having a great understanding of what they do in a very complicated defensive scheme here's a direct snap they pitch it back on a flea flicker to Patterson and Patterson has an open receiver at the 35 yard line it's Peoples Jones all the way down inside the 20. I love the design, the direct snap to Haskins, pitch it back to Patterson. Look how patient he is, surveying the field. An excellent job by those guys on the offensive line, giving Shea Patterson plenty of time to survey. An excellent job there by Peoples-Jones, getting across the field and creating a lot of separation for his quarterback. And with that, Patterson passes his head coach, Jim Harbaugh. Patterson's also closing in on a 3,000 yard season. There's only been two guys at Michigan to do that John Navarre and Jake Rudock And you think of all the great quarterbacks they've had as it looked like Patterson was trying to call a timeout He did before the snap, but you think of all the great quarterbacks they had at Michigan obviously the goat Tom Brady 
Brian Greasy won a national championship at Michigan. Jim Harbaugh played in the NFL. But Shea Patterson trying to become just the third to have a 3,000 yard passing season. From small town. Chad Henney's the all-time leading passer at Michigan. Shea Patterson, Shea Patterson's moving up the list. He's going to come in here and erase Harbaugh's name. Put himself in there, number seven, <laughs> out of his coach. If I'm him, I'm running back to the side. I say, how many yards did I need? Oh, I think I passed you now. That'd be the first thing I'd say to Harbaugh coming off the field on this drive. No, it wouldn't. How do you think Coach Harbaugh would react? <laughs> He'd look right through his eyes out the back side of his head. He'd say, Dylan, come over here, the backup quarterback. Dylan McCaffrey, get in there. <laughs> they fake the jet sweep and hand it off to Haskins inside the 20, breaking a tackle. And dragged down inside 10. The helmet came off for Xavier McKinney, who might be their best player in defense. He's going to have to sit out this next play. This is a beautiful job by Haskins being patient, allowing it to develop, setting up the block to the outside, and then slipping up field and getting vertical. He's been such a big difference maker here in the second half of the season, and I think him and Charbonnet are going to form a very formidable one-two punch here in the years to come. Ben Brett has got a hold with, got away with a big time hold there on the edge as well. Keep an eye on one on one coverage press. They like to take those shots occasionally. And again, Noel McKinney for this play. Patterson dumping it off for a touchdown to the tight end. Eubanks. Touchdown of the season for Nick Eubanks, a senior from Plantation, Florida. Twenty-third touchdown pass for Shea Patterson. Looked really good on that drive. And Nordines highs it up at seven midway through this opening quarter. What a beautiful design by offense coordinator Josh Gaddis. You got to account for the jet sweep. And then you got to account for the inside run. And then sure enough, they're going to go ahead and sneak Eubanks out from the backfield. This is just so difficult to defend. If you talk to Alabama defensive coordinator Pete Golding, he said we've got to be really cognizant of the quarterback run. Clearly, look at the defenders for Alabama with eyes on number two, Shea Patterson. Very, very concerned about that quarterback run. As a result, Eubanks is able to sneak into the flat for the easy touchdown. That's just a beautiful design and excellent answer from Michigan's offense. And Greg, you know, standing down here on Michigan's side, and I'm on the side where the touchdown occurred. There's an energy and there's an enthusiasm on this Michigan sideline, whether it was Jim Harbaugh, whether it was Ed Werner, the offensive line coach, support staff, Josh Gaddis, everybody, players, coaches, support staff alike, all the way down here to the 15-10 yard line with a welcoming committee for Shea Patterson and crew. There just seems to be a confidence down here once they settled down and got a stop on defense. Well, guys, look, this, this means more for Michigan than it does for Alabama. For Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines, beating Alabama today is more important, I believe, than it is that Alabama beats Michigan. It might be the biggest moment of Jim Harbaugh's tenure. I mean, outside of some pretty disappointing performances, this would be a signature win for what Harbaugh and Michigan are trying to accomplish. A touchback. They will come out to the 25 later today on ESPN, and the ESPN app is the granddaddy of them all. The Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual, Oregon, and Wisconsin. And then Georgia Baylor go head-to-head -head in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Do you think any of those teams would have fared better than Oklahoma in the college football playoff semifinal against LSU? Or is that an unfair question because hindsight's 20-20? Hindsight's 20-20, but I think Oregon and Wisconsin would have matched up better because of how they can play on the perimeter and how they can control the line of scrimmage. That was an absolute beatdown between the LSU Tigers and the Oklahoma Sooners. Run play here. Harris stood up at about the, the 28. And I know, guys, that people saw that score and watched that game and said, oh, this is why you shouldn't expand playoff. I'm going to look at it the other way. Maybe it's a reason to expand the college football playoff because there's teams who aren't in that top four. You just mentioned two of them, Wisconsin-Oregon, that match up better. 
but it still would like to be one-sided because it's very clear this year that there are three championship caliber programs but it's not like that every year it's like that most years Jones pass caught by Judy and look at Judy reverse field and still have the speed to get back near midfield man is he talented Jerry Judy Deerfield Beach, Florida, Jr. When you talk to Steve Sarkeesian, he said, Max Jones is a better player when he turns his back to the defense, meaning off-play action, and he can turn around and react to what he sees. So that time he turns his back to the defense, he's able to locate Judy over the middle between the zone defenders. Very accurate throw, and Judy does what he always does, makes some positive yards after catch. Could be his final game if he decides to go to the NFL. Hand off to Harris off the left edge. And into Michigan territory for a pickup of about three or four. Greg, you know, you, you talk about Mac Jones and about turning his back. I think the other thing, too, that Steve Sarkeesian wanted to make a point of was when Mac Jones would have some duress issues, particularly against Auburn, his eyes would come down to see the rush, and then he'd try to get him back up. That time, he navigated the pocket, and his eyes never came down. So always seeing Sammy what's downfield and in front of him. We saw Sark there in his first year as the offensive coordinator was here as an assistant a few years ago Then went to the Falcons to be their offensive coordinator for a couple of years as they stuff out that screen pass As Glasgow takes on Billingsley they're trying to set up the wide receiver screen to the true freshman Just his second catch of the year. It was a beautiful job here by Glasgow reading through it And Jed Wills the right tackle for Alabama future first round pick Really poorly done there trying to secure the edge. So after the negative play, it's third down and 10 for Alabama. Pressure off the edge. It's picked up and it's through the hands of Waddle incomplete. This was nice anticipation from Mac Jones and, and good separation from Waddle. The ball just slightly behind Waddle, but not enough to the point where he should drop it. You see it on the back side. I mean, that's one that Waddle's got to make. And you know if he makes it, there's a lot of space in front for him to create. Missed opportunity there from Alabama. He felt he was held by Vincent Gray, but no penalty flag, obviously. Alabama in perfect position. Devontae Smith inside the one yard line 50 yard punt take a look at the last drive by michigan that was a beautiful answer it all got started because of the run play charbonnet getting to the edge and a good job by big ben mason up front i love this direct snap flea flicker and the protection is a beautiful thing look at how much room and time shea patterson has to work people jones Finds a way to get across the middle of the field and Eubanks, excellent design. You fake the jet switch to the right, you fake the inside zone right up the middle, and you sneak Eubanks out in the flat for an easy touchdown. That was a really well-executed draft from the Wolverines the last time out on offense. A little bit taller order here, though, backed up inside their one-yard line. And they get good push up front, and that allows Haskins to have some running room past the five and out to the eight-yard line. John Runyon, two-time first-team All-Big Ten left tackle. Playing his final game at Michigan. Ben Bredesen, guy that has an NFL future at left guard. We can talk about the receivers and the quarterbacks, their improvement over the course of the last half of the season. But this offensive line, you can't overlook the improvements they made as well. They did a great job of taking the challenge of the early season struggles and started to play really well and cohesive down the stretch. They just gave their quarterback some breathing room here, Greg. Second down and three. And waiting a second is Charbonnet. Then he turns on the Jets. Great patience that time. He waited for the hole to open and he hit it and picks up 10 yards. And how about the block out in front, too? Charbonnet does a great job of setting it up and then bouncing to the outside. This was really well run by Charbonnet. Great job by Bredesen out in front. Throwing his body at the feet of the defender. And Charbonnet, not elite top end speed, but very savvy and nuanced. Runner with the football and setting up blocks and creating yardage. He'll run it again. And this time, Alabama does a pretty job getting to Charbonnet and making the tackle. 
Now, Alabama getting some penetration on that play there, but Greg, in the previous two runs, really Alabama's struggling up front. They're struggling to disengage and block. They're struggling to run to the football. No DJ Dale and no Raquan Davis on the last two plays for Davis. Dale, of course, out for the day. Alabama's really got to do a better job setting the edge in the run game, both against quarterback run and what Charbonnet and Haskins bring at the running back spot as well. Patterson on second down and eight. His pass is caught and close to first down to Samer still to the 30 yard line. So, Greg, you and Tom are talking about the defense. We already mentioned how the rush defense has been worse this year than the last two decades at Alabama. If Tua Tagovailoa is healthy, do they still beat because they're not good enough or deep enough on defense? The, the defense has been the Achilles heel this year. There's no denying that. And you can score points. In bunches and they have but when you allow 48 against Auburn it's gonna be really difficult to win those games consistently big hole straight ahead and Charbonnet has another first down after the 40-yard line and certainly the way LSU's offense played and obviously two have played in that game but look at that hole again not only the hole, but then the lack of tackling on the back end. Xavier McKinney, number 15, who's usually so reliable. His runs fits and run support, missing the tackle there. And clearly Michigan liking what they see now with some of their matchups up front. Alabama's rotating a bunch of defenders in along the defensive line, but they haven't had an answer for this run game. Play fake here for Patterson, and he throws it now to Jackson out of the backfield inside the 40-yard line. And Jackson knocked out of bounds inside the 20. Boy, was that designed and executed beautifully by Wolverine. And every time Giles Jackson's on the field, you have to have an all-points bulletin on him defensively. And there's lined up at the running back spot, away from where he ended up catching the football. He crosses the center space. He runs on the wheel route up front. It's a great design from offensive coordinator Josh Gattis in creating some space for his most explosive wide receiver and weapon offensively. Final minute of the opening quarter, and Michigan starting this drive on its one-yard line. in the red zone now. Patterson off play action. Ball comes out as he gets drilled. They haven't ruled yet whether it's a full pass or not. It's recovered by Peoples-Jones of Michigan, and they are going to rule that uh, it was a fumble by Patterson. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the offense. Sack down. It looked like his arm was moving forward to me. I mean, you see as he's winding up. Got that glove hand on there. And that arm is moving forward. They're going to have to take a look at this. Because it's pretty clear that that is an attempt to throwing the football, moving it forward. That was Barmore on the hit. Surprised they're not looking at this. Me too. Now they do. Let's bring Dave Katai in our... Uh... Rules expert is with us here in the booth. Do you agree with Greg, Dave? Greg, completely. A very good description of what happened. The rule is that the ball has to be controlled in the hand or arm when that hand or arm is moving forward. It is moving forward when that ball comes out. I got an incomplete pass here. No doubt. I think it's very clear. And I'm honestly good with the officials allowing it to play out. Hey, air on the side of the fumble, correct? Instead of blowing it dead and whistling it dead. So I, I'm good with how they handled it on the field. But now, so the beauty of replay, being able to correct it, Dave, is, is imperative. Well, you're absolutely correct because if you rule an incomplete pass and it really is a fumble, they can review it and it can be given to the defense as long as it's recovered in the immediate and continuing action. But any advance is canceled. So you want to let that go and give replay a chance. And as you see, it was recovered by Michigan, ruling on the field, a fumble and a four-yard loss. But I think it's pretty clear, looking at that, that uh, it's going to get overturned. Now, the reason that it takes a little bit longer sometimes, uh, and I know fans are antsy, they see it, but, you know, they got to figure out, right, Dave, how much time on the clock, where to spot the ball, down in distance, all that, right? Yeah, they've got to bring the ball back. They rule incomplete pass to the previous spot, reset the clock if necessary. But that's what takes the time. Yeah. So 14 seconds to go. The offense for Michigan has looked pretty good here in the opening quarter. Tell you what, guys, where, where Shea is fortunate is that he was able to get his arm moving forward. Because if that ball goes out when his arm going back, 
Now you, you now you've really got an issue. So nice job by Shea Patterson having the hand strength to just hold on to the football. He's got that glove on, man. Oh, Keep that's that hand true. very strong, nice and tacky. But Dude, how do they do that? I, I could <laughs> never. I kept whether it's cold or warm. I couldn't throw with a glove on. I love it. I think it's awesome. I just couldn't do it. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> some say Tom couldn't throw with one off. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a, that's fair. I, Tom, are you sure you're not left-handed? That's most, my question. Uh, most. To review, it's an incomplete pass. It will be set down. Timer, please reset the game clock to 57 seconds. The clock will start on the snap. Thank you. So there you go, 57 seconds, second and 10 on the 20 yard line after the incompletion. And a really nice first quarter for Michigan's offense. Finding some opportunities and not a little love for, for Barmore though because Alabama needed something to happen. They needed to get some pressure on Patterson. They had not yet. Patterson in trouble again. This is Davis chasing. And Patterson gonna tuck and run and maybe get two yards. Davis at 6 7 3 15 running from one side of the field to the other after the quarterback They're playing his final college game too. We know it means a lot to him hasn't gone the way he's wanted it to go this year, but He pinned his ears back and tried to make tough on the quarterback here on third down in the red zone Shea Patterson has to be really smart with the football His windows are tight in this part of the field. They love to utilize their tight ends in this area of the field as well. So if they can create a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for the tight end, that might be the spot you'd look. And they got Eubanks right here lined up at number three. Patterson going for Eubanks in the end zone overthrown. Xavier McKinney, first team All-SEC, free safety, had the coverage that time. And that's the matchup you love. Big bodies in the red zone he's working against xavier mckinney who is such a great football player but he had a chance a little more air under that football and shea might have had himself another touchdown pass to eubanks clearly shea knows he missed it yep it's still the right place to go with the football and a and a difficult throw that you have to try to execute so nordine is on now for a 36 yard field goal try and it's good so with nine seconds of play in the first quarter, Michigan in front, 10-7. Got a lot more bowl games between now and the college football playoff national championship. Two more games tomorrow on ESPN and the ESPN app. BC and Cincinnati in the Ticket Smarter Birmingham Bowl. Indiana and Tennessee will meet in the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. The last bowl win for Indiana 29 years ago. Trent Green was a quarterback. Wow. Good year for the Hoosiers. That was a good win by Michigan. The Wolverines beat Iowa, Notre Dame, Michigan State, and Indiana. Those were their quality wins this year. Yeah, Indiana, I, I can't say enough great things about how that program has been able to turn around, finally get up, getting over the hump, finally get the postseason after so many close calls over the years. And then how about their opponent? Tennessee Volunteers left for dead right after an 0-2 start somehow Jeremy Pruitt being able to rally the troops and get them to the postseason you know both those two teams we question sometimes whether the motivation will be there I don't think we need to make a question about what Indiana and Tennessee are gonna bring to the table well, think about it. we were there we watched them collapse it's BYU week two in Knoxville it just seemed like it was gonna be a season that was lost and maybe Jeremy Pruitt would make it not the case. Jalen Waddle on the return. And man, is he hard to bottle up. And they finally get Waddle to the ground at the 23 yard line. That has got to stress the heck out of coaches trying to <laughs> game plan for that guy. He is ridiculous. I mean, he's Dante Hall. I mean, he's Dante Hall and Devin Hester when they were at their peak in the return game. He is just absolute dynamite with the ball in his hands. Remember the first play was an 85-yard touchdown pass for Alabama to Jerry Jude, but since only 43 yards. And they got to figure out a way to generate more consistency on first and second down to avoid some third and long. So Alabama got to get back to the run game here in the next three quarters to spell some of that momentum. Instead, it's play action, and Harris does a good job to pick up the blitz. A shot here to Ruggs. There's some contact, but no flag. Vincent Gray 
hand fighting with rugs and it's incomplete that end the first quarter man you got to have an absolute howitzer attached to your right shoulder to hit Henry Ruggs on a deep V route clear the ball a little underthrown and good defense by Gray Michigan 10 Alabama 7 after one quarter the first game of a new decade back after this message and a word from our ABC stations An absolute gorgeous day in Orlando as we remind you this season every field goal and extra point made by participating universities all states going to make a contribution to the university's general scholars fund. Thank you all state temperature 70 degrees verbo citrus bowl start of the second quarter it's 10 7 Michigan on top of Alabama Crimson Todd trying to win its 11th game for the ninth straight year which would be the longest of the AP poll era and Michigan trying to get win number 10. And will probably be Jim Harbaugh's biggest win at Michigan. Big hole for Harris. Run here past the 40-yard line. Hurdles a defender. And finally taken down near midfield. A great run by Najee Harris from 25 yards. You gotta wonder if this is a bust defensively. Look how many Michigan defenders are on this side. And on this side, they have one. So what happens? As a result, next thing you know, the run falls to the right, and they don't have enough numbers to the right side of the offensive line, and Najee Harris is out the gate. You have to wonder if that was an error in adjustment by Michigan's defense that led to the big run. And a swing pass here to Judy out in space, and nowhere to go. Hog tied by Thomas after a gain of one. Now Tua Tonga by Lowe is here. And you see the crutch under his left arm out for the season with a hip injury. Will he or won't he? What would you do, Greg, if you were to? Would you go to the NFL or would you come back for one more shot at a championship and a Heisman Trophy? I'd lean heavily on medical evaluation he's going to get in the coming weeks. Try to make the most informed decision possible, but knowing the timetable of his recovery, knowing he might not be available to throw until mid-April, I'd come back. All right, hold that thought. Here's a swing pass to, or a swing rather to Harris. Nice job by Glasgow on the tackle. So you think that the two is coming back to Bama? I think it's a real possibility. I, I, I really believe that's what he's going to do. I, I don't know that for certain. I haven't asked him specifically. I have talked to him and asked him what factors are going to weigh in to the decision. And he said, look, it's all about medical. How quickly can I get out there and showcase my abilities for teams? And if I can't work out and showcase my abilities on the field, yeah. it's going to be really tough for teams to evaluate me. So I think it's all about the timetable of his recovery. And at this point, all signs point to him coming back. Jones on third down and 10. The pass high and complete intended for Judy. I think what will be interesting is if Tua decides to come back, there are a lot of great juniors that could go to the NFL. Is there a domino effect? Do guys decide to return with Tua? There are nine guys that are weighing that decision. All juniors, all very well regarded, but several of which maybe not as highly regarded as they would be next year were they to come back. So if Tua comes back, I wouldn't be shocked to see his next six come back. And Nick Saban, he doesn't know either, but uh, he, he said he wouldn't be surprised either way right now with what Tua decides. A touchback, it will come out to the 20. Get all three for $12.99 a month. Well, Luke's I've had to tiptoe around McElroy for the last two weeks because he and I have both seen Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, and you're still watching all the movies on the Disney app before <laughs> because you want to watch I all gotta, eight. I, I've got to watch all eight. It's actually why well, I've got to watch Rogue One. i got to watch Solo. i got to make sure I'm prepared. And I've also been watching Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah to prepare. Luke's gave me homework assignment, though. The Marvel movie is my first priority, yep. and, and I was able to complete that. So I did what I was told to do, Luke's. Yeah, I was just mad I didn't get a Baby Yoda for Christmas. <laughs> Here is uh, Charbonnet, the true freshman, again getting the call. Alabama trying to punch it out. He's out to the 26-yard line, so a six-yard run. Well, Jim Harbaugh in his fifth year. It's the longest he's been at any one stop. He was at Stanford for four years, four years with the San Francisco 49ers, and uh, ten wins, three years trying to get his fourth ten-win season in five years. That hasn't happened at Michigan 
since 1980. And they've had a stretch like that. Yet obviously there are a lot of Wolverine fans that want more. They want championships. And Charbonnet picks a hole and gets a first down. Michigan hasn't won the Big Ten since 04, and they shared it that year with Iowa. The last national title in 1997. How would you guys evaluate the job that Harbaugh's done? I think he's done a good job. I mean, they are consistently excellent in a really difficult division in college football. The Big Ten East is about as deep and as talented as just about any division outside of the SEC West. And disappointing thing, though, is obviously the performances against Ohio State. You have to beat your rival. And, and until you do that, the fan base is never going to be completely satisfied. On first down, Patterson, a long throw to Eubanks to the 40-yard line. No, Greg, I, I think the other thing, too, and you mentioned it earlier with at Indiana and the whole game they're going to play in. Every team has hurdles. And, and you know, whether it's getting to six wins, whether it's getting ball, whether it's getting past that. The hurdle for Michigan is beating the best opponents on their schedule, not just Ohio State. That's the next thing, the, the next step for this Michigan football team. Just three wins versus top ten teams since 2012. Getting a win versus an Alabama, getting a win versus a highly ranked team during the regular season, that's the next step for Michigan. They did beat Notre Dame, which they did. You could make a case is a better win than anybody Alabama beat this year. Totally. You're right. I think it's real easy to treat Michigan as punching bag. I think it's low-hanging fruit. And I understand the frustrations at times with the performances in the big games. There have been several in which they haven't been competitive. But the overall progress from the time Jim Harbaugh got there to where he's at now, this program's built to succeed for a while. Patterson chased out of the pocket on third down and four. Able to pick up the first down. Shane Lee was tracking him, but Patterson showed his speed and picked up seven yards and moved the chains. And a great job by Patterson. Feeling that presence on the right-hand side. Lee just sneaking through, but also seeing the man coverage in the back end with the defenders covering the... Michigan wide receivers were locked in on them, allowing the quarterback run to bounce the outside. That's a great job by Shea Patterson on the conversion. And excellent balance by Harbaugh and Josh Gaddis, the offensive coordinator, and they're getting a ton of yards on the ground on first down plays. Hassan Haskins into Alabama territory. Eight more yards. Greg, the options that you have when you are ahead of the chains on first down are enormous in terms of your array of play calls. And I'll, and I'll say this, Pete Golden, the defensive coordinator at Alabama, his number one concern is the mobile quarterback. It wasn't receivers, it wasn't necessarily the run game. How do we contain number two? They're doing a great job controlling the line of scrimmage against the physical front. Running on second down and three, Haskins. Brought down, yard shy of the line to gain, so it'll be third down and one. And you see Pete Golden, the defensive coordinator for Alabama, just trying to challenge his guys. They're limited because of their youth and their inexperience, so there's only a certain amount of play calls that he has access to. They gotta find a way to stop the run regardless. And Patterson gonna keep it here and gets the first down. So that's two. Times here on this possession that Jay Patterson has been able to keep the drive going with his feet. And this is a shot down right here. Plus 40, first and 10. Patterson just did a nice job with his legs on third and short. Get your good personnel on the field and find an opportunity to take a shot downfield. Wouldn't be surprised to see heavy play action. See if they can create a one-on-one -on -one against Alabama safeties and coverage. It is play action, and here comes the shot. Everybody covered up. Patterson trying to dump it off there as a flag flies through the hands of Bell. Incomplete, but he was going to throw that ball downfield. There were two Wolverines, including tight end Sean McEwen, going deep. Holding number 75 offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. And you see Runyon there with that left arm wrapped around the Alabama defender. Very obvious call for the center judge whose responsibility is to look right at that left tackle. You can't get away with anything if you're the left tackle knowing that that center judge has got to do two things. Spot the ball and walk the left tackle in the end of the line of scrimmage. That time with no attached tight end, Runyon easily called there for the holding penalty on the shot play. And it was going to be Nico Collins who is going to be targeted there is going deep play action and a quick throw a slot first down catch by bell inside the 30-yard line 
Bell with 34 catches during the regular season led Michigan that category and he picks up 22 yards here. Yeah, and you're going to see the effect off the edge that this play fake has. Obviously, Michigan win the ball with great effectiveness, so Golding trying to ramp up pressure just a little bit defensively, which allows Bell to work one-on-one -on -one covered against Maiden. He does a great job after the catch, creating additional yards. Ronnie Bell, a sophomore from Kansas City. And now Patterson throwing again, lobbing it down the sideline. Intended for Peoples-Jones, but Patrick Sertan had really good coverage. Excellent sophomore corner from Plantation, Florida. And he is so long. <laughs> He's 6'2", every bit of it. And look at the right arm here extending. That is a tiny window for Shea Patterson to drop that ball into. And you see the, the tug fantastic. there. That's Yeah, really nicely done. I mean, a lot of contact there, but usually in a bang-bang jump ball situation, you're not going to get that call. Looked like there was contact by both guys. Sertan's dad, longtime Miami Dolphin. Charbonnet trying to spin out of the tackle, get shoved back at the 24 yard line by Federian Mathis, who made his first career start in the Iron Bowl. Look at Patterson since a slow start. Had a touchdown pass to Eubanks. I think that flea flicker was the one that got him going. No doubt. He's been very accurate with the football and has made good decisions with his legs. And here on a third down, Got to think he's going to try to work this matchup here with Ronnie Bell. Man coverage yet again with pressure coming off the left side from Alabama. How about they've run 20 more plays in the tide here in the first half. This is the 36th play for Michigan. Alabama bringing pressure. They rush four. Patterson leaving the pocket. Pointing. And throwing complete to the 15-yard line. A flag down Ronnie Bell. Did he go out of bounds on his own? I'm assuming is the call here. If you're pushed out, blocked out, you can come back in. But if you go out on your own, you can't come back in and be the first guy to touch the ball. Illegal touching, number eight offense. Dirt down. The receiver voluntarily went out of bounds. Returned to the field to play. That was the first player to touch the pass. That's a loss of down at the previous spot. Third down. And Alabama changed up their defensive look. And you see that right foot clearly out of bounds there for Ronnie Bell. It's a great job by the officials. Of course, like the official said, you can be forced out, come back in, and make a play on the football, but when you go out voluntarily, they're going to make the call. Excellent job by the side judge, recognizing that, tossing his hat, and then obviously tossing the flag. And that was third down, so a 42-yard attempt. Nordine made one from 36 yards in the first quarter. And has no problem with this one. So Michigan extends the lead to six midway through the second quarter here in Orlando. Searching Taco Bell. The Verbo Citrus Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Verbo. Travel better together. In part by Pacific Life. 150 years strong protection and retirement solutions for your future and Taco Bell's $1 double stack tacos fifth all-time meeting between Michigan and Alabama they met in the regular season in 2012 with the other three times in bowl games and the game in 2000 the Orange Bowl that was Tom Brady's final game at Michigan he had a day, too. <laughs> he went off. He went right. off in that one. <laughs> the Tom Brady that we've seen for, what, however long now, and we really kind of just saw a couple of times at college. <laughs> you, no. asked, you asked Sean Alexander's on the opposite sideline. He said, so I didn't know who Tom Brady was at that point, but I knew coming out of that game, that guy can play. So, <laughs> he, impressive way to finish his college career. And then just months later was a sixth-round draft pick by the Patriots, and the rest is history. Another touchback that'll come out to the 25, Tom. 
Guys, Josh Gattis, the offensive coordinator down here after two back-to-back -back red zone trips resulting in field goals, told his offense, listen, guys, this isn't basketball. We're not beating Alabama with threes. And, you know, we all, we all watched the Fiesta Bowl, didn't we? So for Michigan to really pull away in this thing, they're going to they're gonna have to score in their opportunities when they cross the 25-yard line. Yeah, that was the issue uh, for Ohio State along with uh, Trevor Lawrence uh, in that game against Clemson. Right He's now. okay. Right now, Michigan is is really dominating the game. Almost 250 yards of offense to Alabama's 150, so got to continue it. Here's Judy out in space, getting a block from Devontae Smith, and close to a first down as we check in with John Brickley in the studio. Dave, thank you very much. This new update brought to you by Great Cliffs, the Outback Bowl on ESPN. Minnesota and Auburn. Gophers go for it on fourth and goal. Bryce with them with a one-yard touchdown reception. Caps off a 12-play, 92-yard drive for Minnesota, who has the lead. Look that in ball games. Let, let it all. Don't leave anything going into the offseason. Go for it on fourth down and go at the one. <laughs> As uh, Harris picks up the first down for Alabama. All I hear is Brent Musburg and Dan Fouts and the water boy right there. <laughs> it's the last game of the year, Brent. Can't hold anything back now. You know, that's all I hear right there as soon as you just wax poetic about the final game of the year. <laughs> of course, Bob Boucher led the Mud Dogs back in Bourbon Bowl. You can do it! <laughs> Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the movie. I, I haven't. Okay. You just ruined it. Okay, well, sorry about that. Come on, Dave. The good guy wins. So you're saying this is like a big twist in, in this movie that I need to prepare for. <laughs> There's pressure off the edge. Jones gets it away to Judy, and look out. Judy able to blow by that defender who had the angle. How about that move? Ambry Thomas had the angle, and then Jerry Judy turned on the Jets and ran right by him. 18 yards. I love the pressure by Don Brown, but I love Mac Jones' ability to slide left just a little bit by a little more time, keeping his eyes downfield, knowing he's going to get hit, knowing he's short in protection, and delivering an accurate throw to Judy. That's advanced level football for Mac Jones. I know CeeDee Lamb had a great year at Oklahoma. As uh, they run Harris here, he gets down to about the 40. And uh, Judy's year, at least from a production standpoint, wasn't what it was last year when he won the Bolitnikoff. And, and so that was because of the guys around him. But I'm trying to think of a guy that I've seen this talented the last few years at his position. I mean, he's so smooth. And we talk, I think Devontae Smith is like Marvin Harrison. I think Henry Ruggs is Deshaun Jackson. I think Jerry Judy's a mix of the two. Really, really fast and really explosive. Play fake here. Jones steps up, throws a deep ball. Judy beats his guy, and that's going to be interference on LaVert Hill. Judy ran past him, and Hill did everything he could to make sure that Judy didn't come back and catch the ball and score a touchdown. Pass interference, number 24, defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. That's an automatic first down. Uh, easy call from the officials, but frankly, if I'm LaVert Hill, that's that's a good penalty. Sure. I mean, you get beat, it's either a 15-yard penalty or it's a touchdown. Which one do you want? So I'm okay with him doing that. You just can't get beat that badly off the line of scrimmage as his defensive coordinator looks on. Is that a good plan so far for this Alabama offense? Don Brown is a boys board candidate. Keep an eye on Waddle. He's in the slot. Here he comes motioning across. And then they release him. Jones, though, throwing it downfield, incomplete. Try to hit Devontae Smith. When Waddle's in the game, you, your antenna has to go up. Not all that unlike Giles Jackson for Michigan. When 17's on the field, they're going to try to find a way to get him the football. That time they motioned him across, tried to sneak out in the flat. Clearly, Michigan dialed into his presence there on the motion. And did a good job of taking him away, forcing Mac Jones to throw it to number two on the comeback. Had that phenomenal game against Auburn. Special teams player of the year in the SEC. Had a kick return against Auburn. Had a punt return for a touchdown this year. Six receiving touchdowns. Harris trying to get the corner here on Metellus. And he gets to him at the 21-yard line. It'll be third down. Third about five. Good job of making this third down a little more manageable. Without Judy on the field right now for Alabama, a little surprised that they wouldn't run him out on the critical down and distance. Instead, looks like Waddle, Ruggs, and Smith will be the three wide receivers in formation here. Stack alignment. Waddle's on the motion here, moving across the football. Let's see if they move him. Now somebody moved. It wasn't supposed to. <laughs> 
Not the kind of movement you were talking about, but movement nonetheless, it draws a penalty. Full start, number 69, offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. It's on Landon Dickerson, the center, so now you're at third and 10. Alabama already 0 for 3 on third down, and now you're third and long. And you've watched Landon Dickerson kind of fall out of his stance a little bit. Pretty good recovery. It's usually a big guy like that's going to go tumbling backwards like Humpty Dumpty. So it's a good job by hanging in there, but got to be mindful of the snap count on a critical down and distance. So third down and 10. And Jones from the pocket senses pressure and throws it away as he was about to get smoked by Aiden Hutchinson. And a flag is down as Jones got hit hard by Hutchinson. He was pleading his case, but isn't going to win this one. What do you think? It's a really physical hit, and it is high. Personal foul, running the passer, number 97, defense. Out the distance. Three day to tie, Dave. I'm going to get your, your take on this here. Well, the hit's not late, right? And it's it's high, but it's not at the helmet. The only thing they could possibly see on that is using his body weight right. to drive him into the ground, which is a new point of emphasis on the, in the rules this year. And there it is. You look at him turn it over and, and use that body weight to drive Mac Jones into the turf, trying to protect the quarterback. Huge emphasis in our game. Jim Harbaugh wanted grounding on Mac Jones. Michigan has maybe too many guys on the field right now. Did you see grounding possibly there by Mac Jones? Second charge tied out. Michigan. The Mish Doctor returns Monday, January 13th on ABC. Wild Card Weekend is coming up on ESPN and ABC. Saturday, 4.35 Eastern Time. Deshaun Watson and the AFC South champion Texans hosting second-year Buffalo Bill quarterback Josh Allen and company. Bills went 10 and 6. You see the numbers for both Watson and Allen. Buffalo hasn't won a playoff game since 95, by the way. Texans lost to the Colts last year in the AFC wildcard game. What a job they've done in Buffalo. I mean, Josh Allen, him using his athleticism, it's been a real nice surprise in, in what is a, an exciting AFC race to the finish. And we'll hear first down for Alabama inside the 15 after the personal foul against Hutchinson. And wow, what a hit on Harris as he gets drilled at the nine-yard line. Michigan's been really physical defensively. Second down. Greg, I think that's been the difference on both sides of the ball for these two teams. Michigan has just been better up front, more physical within their defensive front and within their offensive front. They've done a really good job of controlling the tempo of game and creating yardage when available. Yep, Alabama is going to keep the ball on the ground here with this heavy set to the left side. And they bring Ruggs in to help block, and they run to the left end. Going up high is Najee Harris, and hitting pay dirt for the Alabama touchdown and a chance to take the lead. Josh Metellus came for the hit, and Harris jumped over him. It's a great effort by Najee Harris. He has gone vertical so many times this year. Most of the time, he clears the defender. That time, the defender gets a piece. However, he stretches that left arm out and breaks the plane. Naji Harris earning that touchdown. Beautiful job also by the end of the line of scrimmage on the left-hand side, securing the edge and allowing Harris to have one-on-one -on -one opportunities at the second level. Another in a long line of great backs at Alabama. Derrick Henry won the Heisman and was the rushing champ in the NFL this year. Josh Jacobs, first-round pick of the Raiders, could be the offensive rookie of the year. Najee Harris, who's a junior, might this be his last game, though, as a member of Crimson Tide. The extra point by Bullivus gives Alabama a one-point lead. There's a penalty marker down, though. 12th rushing touchdown for Najee Harris this year. Also at seven receiving touchdowns. A Bama record for a running back. Offside, number one defense. That penalty is declined. The extra point is good. Alabama need an answer, and they found one with their excellent running back, Najee Harris, going vertical and taking the lead.
ESPN celebrating 150 years of college football. And as we celebrate the 150th anniversary of college football, let's take a look at these teams' meetings in the 2000 Orange Bowl. Sean Alexander ran for 161 yards and three touchdowns. Game went to overtime. Tom Brady, four touchdown pass of the day. Bama answers for the touchdown, but the point after is wide right, and Michigan wins it in overtime. 35-34, Tom Brady's last game. We're in days and blue. Stream the entire library now at ESPNplus.com. So many great moments that we've been highlighting over the course of the college football season. Still a lot more to go until the championship. Fair catch by Jackson. It will come out to the 25. Let's take a look at who's showing up presented by Peloton app. So far, it's been Shea Patterson. He's done a great job with his legs. You talked to Alabama deep, the coordinator, Pete Golden. He said the one thing we're really concerned about is his athleticism and being able to create on his own. There he was on the scramble to the left, fighting space, and here on a critical third down conversion. And then because of how cognizant Alabama is with Shea Patterson's legs, they're able to sneak Eubanks out into the flat. Patterson's not had the greatest numbers so far today, but he's been accurate and decisive with the football, has some timely rushes to keep some drives alive. He's done a pretty nice job against this Alabama defense. They're down one, three and a half minutes to go. One timeout remaining for the Wolverines. Shea Patterson. Got a throw here, and going up high to make the catch is Nico Collins. Josh Job, who's a big corner at 6'1", 200 pounds, but Collins 6'4", 220. Yeah, when you have big body wide receivers, this is a good job on the RPO. Shea Patterson can either run the football, or if he has one-on-one -on -one with his big body wide receiver, he can throw it to him. A good job on the back shoulder, nice accurate throw from Patterson. 18-yard pickup and then offside with Justin Eboigby creating contact with the Michigan offensive lineman. Offside. 92 defense coming across the neutral zone, causing the offense to start, false start. Five-yard penalty, so first down. Some smart play, too, by Jalen Mayfield when a guy jumps like that into the neutral zone. Just come out of your stance. You're going to get the, uh, the offside call. So first and five for Michigan near midfield. And Patterson will give it to Haskins. It's maybe three before he's brought down. Tackle made by Anthony Jennings. It's important here, too, for Michigan to be mindful of the clock. You don't want to give it back to Alabama with a lot of time left. Run it again here and able to get the first down with good push. It's on Haskins. Christian Harris got him to the ground. But again, you see offensive line downfield. That was Bredesen. I like the tempo that Michigan's playing with. It is a two-minute situation, so of course, having to be very smart with the football if you're Shane Patterson, but no need to be in a huge hurry to take that place. And run it again. One-on-one -on -one here on the perimeter. Oh, nice tackle because that was a sweet move. Joe made the play on Haskins. Stay put there. Haskins tried to juke him. And Job, who again is starting for Trayvon Diggs, electing not to play in this game today. The senior corner for Alabama has hung in there, did a decent job. We got some one-on-one -on -one coverage here. Alabama looking like they're going to play man coverage. Shea Patterson could have an opportunity for a fade route. It's Donovan Peoples Jones on the slot fade. Yeah, they're going to run it. Nowhere to go for Haskins, wrapped up by Harris and Davis. So it'll be third down and short. Michigan again with just one timeout left. Oh my goodness. This is an RPO and goodness look at the jump that Peoples Jones gets. That's a touchdown. You got to throw that. That was the fade we circled a second ago. And they run it here on third down and short. And a nice tackle made at the point of attack by Christian Harris. So it's fourth and two. Do you go for it here if you're Michigan? It looks like the decision's already been made by Jim Harbaugh to go for it. Definitely. Alabama's a nickel, and that's what they've been taking advantage of defensively within the front seven. That's where Michigan's advantage has been in the run game. Be a long field goal, obviously, from here. Though, if you're Michigan, drain that clock. Yep. Know that you're trying to steal three points at the end of the half. Don't want to drain too much of the clock, though, because you want to have enough time to maybe give yourself 
an opportunity to touchdown if you pick up the first down, obviously, which hard to tell if they did or didn't. Haskins stepped up at 35-yard line. Anthony Jennings, the first man to greet him in the hole. It's going to be a first down. Yeah, now you need to play with tempo. At this point, clock's about to wind, or it is winding now. After the first down, a little bit of miscommunication between Patterson and Mason at the end of the line of scrimmage. Patterson to the air here, looking. Now in trouble, Davis chasing him. Patterson gets out of there, throws it downfield. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Josh Job broke it up. Actually, it looked like Sean McEwen, the tight end, broke up what was going to be an interception by Job. And I don't like this play at all by Shea Patterson. Not only did he just take off about 15 seconds on the clock by scrambling around, but you had a negative play. As soon as it's dead, dump it. Only bad things can happen at that point. Unless a guy screaming wide open, throw it away as soon as you can to conserve some of those valuable seconds that just drained off the clock. Well, and you got to get a little bit closer here, too, for your kicker. It's about a 53-yarder from here. Nordin's won the series 49. Patterson in trouble and sack. Michigan's going to have to use a timeout. Anthony Jennings got the sack. They're out of field goal range, one would think here, but they're not using the timeout. Harbaugh's going to take it down to three seconds, then call it, and then just kick it. A little surprised that uh, he wouldn't call timeout and run another play to try to get him back in the field goal range. Coming up on the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report, Reese does and David will be by some of the topics we're going to talk about a preview of the Rose Bowl. Jesse Palmer on the Georgia Baylor Sugar Bowl. But are, are you as surprised as I am that he didn't call timeout and run another play to try to get closer for the kicker? No, I, I think Nordine has enough leg. It's just he's a little inconsistent right and left. I think Jim Harbaugh's got to be fuming about that ball that Shea Patterson handed off when he could have hit Donovan Peoples-Jones on a shot play one-on-one -on -one down the field, which is a walk-in touchdown if he throws it. But I'm not surprised at this point. You had one timeout left, and you just try to take a shot towards the end zone with your kicker. He does. We talked, you know, this year, 47 year, does have a 55 yard in his career, but this is 57. Yeah, and if I'm Alabama, I'm going to call timeout, freeze him, and then I'm going to put Jalen Waddell in the back of the end zone because if the ball is short, I want a chance to return it with the most dynamic playmaker I have in the field. Man, I love that idea. We'll see if uh, see if Nick Saban calls a timeout here. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, now he does. So let's see. Does he bring Waddle in? I love that idea, Greg. And the chances of the kick being short are, are, are unlikely, but I kind of like the chances of having Waddle back there and just having the 10 guys at the, at the line right. trying to go rather than having everybody up there trying to block it. Yeah, I mean, it, the likelihood of getting a block is... Obviously pretty small, but from a longer distance, you can't get a hand up. You have a 6'7 guy in Raekwon Davis that can stretch out and maybe get a piece of it. Knowing that the kick is a little deeper, it's going to take off with a little lower trajectory. And if he misses it at all, if he's underneath it at all and it pops up in the air, that's an opportunity to return. And uh, I'll take my chance. If I can get the ball in, in Jalen Waddle's yeah. hands one additional time, right. exactly. I'm going to take advantage of that. However, you can get it done. Yeah, and guys, you know, watching... Nordin kicked his last 46-yarder. That ball crossed the uprights about three-quarters of the way up. So this guy's got enough leg, and I think Nick Saban knows it. Does it have enough? It does! It's good from 57 to give Michigan the lead at halftime. Perfect snap, perfect hold, laces out, and he drilled it for the brand. Really nicely done as it just clears crossbar as Nick Saban is standing by with Tom Luganville. Well, Coach, you've played effective football in the red zone on defense, but how do you adjust to stopping the run in the second half? Oh, we're not doing a very good job playing our gaps up front. We're not doing a very good job of tackling. We've got a lot of missed tackles. 
Uh, they made a couple big plays on a couple tricks, but we did play well in the red zone and got them got them stuff. But we got to play better in the second half, no doubt. Good offense series for you, resulting in a touchdown there at the end of the second quarter. How do you sustain more consistency on offense? Well, that's that's where we've not been effective. I mean, I think we got to be able to run the ball. We started running the ball a little bit better. That'll open up the passing game a little bit for us, and we got to separate. You know, they're playing a lot of close coverage, and we got good receivers. I got to separate. Thanks, coach. All right, thank you. All right, Tom, and that field goal from 57 ties a Michigan record for the longest field goal in history. We come back. It's a Mercedes-Benz halftime report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to Capital One Bowl Mania. The Verbo Citrus Bowl on ABC, part of Capital One Bowl Mania. And Michigan leading Alabama at halftime, 16-14. On a beautiful day, New Year's Day 2020. And the F-16 Fighting Falcons flying above the stadium. The pilots from the Alabama Air National Guard, members of the 100th Fighter Squadron, one of the four original Tuskegee Airmen Squadrons. Back in the booth, Dave Hash, Greg McElroy, Tom Lugendahl on the field. Michigan was on the field for that entire first half. It seemed like what us the change for Alabama defensively. They have to do a better job of sustaining drives offensively, but defensively, they've got to do a better job against the run. Right now, if you look at what Michigan's been able to do with both Charbonnet and Haskins, they've been able to control the line of scrimmage on multiple different occasions. And Shea Patterson also has contributed a little bit with his legs as well. So Alabama needs to do a better job against the run in the second half. Right now, Michigan's been able to move the ball at will in that regard. 135 rushing yards for Michigan, and that's what Alabama allowed per game during the season, which was the worst in 20 years. Wolverines on pace for 600 yards of offense, but again, just a two-point lead. And we will start the second half with a touchback. Alabama will have the ball on a 25 as we take a look at our Pacific Life game of summer. This was the first play. 85-yard touchdown pass back Jones to Jerry Judy. The tight offense didn't do much after that. And we talked about Michigan's success on the ground. Both run backs had that opportunity. Charbonnet between the tackles, and they found some, some space on the perimeter as well. Expect Michigan to continue to try to establish the line of scrimmage by running the football, and I would expect the same approach from Alabama in trying to get Najee Harris going a little bit. And they will give it to Harris. He's dragged down for a loss by Aiden Hutchinson. Let's check in with Tom. Well, okay, guys, that's the difference right there in the football game. Alabama's not been able to consistently run the football, but Michigan has. With Michigan's approach offensively, Alabama's been out of their gaps. They've missed tackles. We're not accustomed to seeing Alabama defense not play well versus a run, at least not consistently, and that has got to stop in the second, in the second half here. They get off schedule with that negative play, and then Jones in trouble. Wow, small rugs caught it. Past the 45-yard line, but... The fact that Jones was able to hang in there, complete that pass, showed a lot. Yeah, this is a great job stepping up in the pocket. <laughs> you see the Michigan defense just collapsed the pocket. Look at that catch. It's an unbelievable catch. Obviously, ball's a little low, and you see that's a contested catch against Dacton Hill, the freshman. Ruggs with so much speed, though, showing off those soft hands and strong hands as the defender was able to get a hand on the football. They go back to the ground, and Harris with a crease. Oh, if he was... Able to break away from Glasgow. He probably scores, so a touchdown saving tackle there because you knew that Harris had that second gear he was about to turn on as it is a 10-yard run. Alabama really needs to emphasize that running the football mentality because it sets up play action. And here on first and 10 and plus yards, wouldn't be shocked to see Alabama try to dial up a shot play. There is play action, and he's looking deep. Jones take a shot for Devontae Smith. It's caught. It's a touchdown for Bama. <laughs> 42-yard bomb by Jones to Devontae Smith. That is the 14th receiving touchdown for Smith this year. Fifth in the country coming into this game in that category. And Mac Jones with two touchdown passes. I know he's not Tua, but it's a guy to keep an eye on next year. 
if he's the quarterback at Alabama. Really good throws on this possession. As soon as you get first and ten in plus territory, you're thinking shot play. You find Devontae Smith locked in one-on-one -on -one against Lavert Hill. He makes the contested catch and finds the end zone as Alabama retakes the lead. Win Seven Central only on ABC. Twelve days away for the college football playoff national championship game at Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. LSU and Clemson Monday the 13th of January at 8 Eastern time. Tigers have been unbelievable LSU Tigers offensively all year. Clemson since the North Carolina game where the Tar Heels had a chance to win it with a two-point conversion at the end. Everybody kind of forgot about Clemson, but the Tigers have been almost as good as LSU offensively since that ball game short kickoff Giles Jackson for Michigan past the 10 he's got the 25 can he get the edge they finally get him out of bounds around the 36 let's go back to touchdown from Alabama it's a beautiful design you have the stack alignment which allows rugs to essentially clear out the free safety watch the reaction by Daxon look cutting that which allows the one-on-one -on, -one on the out route and up little out and pump see him turn his head to the outside to create a little bit more separation a really nice throw for Mac Jones slightly inside but an excellent adjustment by Devontae Smith securing the catch and finding Pater really nice design on the shot play from Steve Sarkeesian Alabama's had two big passing plays for scores the one to Judy to start the game as here is a backwards pass to Bell, and Bell has room. Oh, what a hit by Josh Chobb at the 48-yard line. Everybody's okay, but man, quite a collision in front of the Alabama bench. And a huge collision. I like the idea. You ran it with effectiveness early. Now, you fake the inside run, and you throw one out into the flat to Bell, who's got a lot of explosiveness, and you see the hit there between... Job and the targeting there on on Job forcible contact Dave Kataya The players defenseless is starting to go down. Uh, I'm surprised they're not taking a look at it at yeah. least to review it They can now and Hands that time to deflect it Byron Young true freshman defensive end of Mississippi it's being blocked and still got a hand up, knocked it down. And back to the original question of targeting, they would have to determine whether or not the player was in fact defenseless. If you're a runner, you're not defenseless. But if they felt as though he was going down and then Josh Job launched towards the header neck area, then that would be considered targeting. Clearly they felt that at that point, Bell was not a defenseless player, therefore there was no targeting. The only way there would have been targeting is if he would have initiated contact with the crown of the helmet. In that particular case, it was with the shoulder. You're going to put to tie out of business here, Greg, if you keep this up. Me and him, just we're just talking here. We're just talking ball, start. talking officiating. Three offense. Yeah, the bottom yard penalty is still second that. down. The defenseless definitions are not all inclusive. If it's a player is in a defenseless position, that can be determined defenseless. To me, he was in a defenseless position. So, so we're we're being told that uh, they're telling our truck that they they thought it was incidental contact Hmm, that's curious They didn't feel that they were that uh, the receiver was was not going into a slide and therefore not defenseless How about incidental contact though? On third down and seven Patterson's pass is caught for a first down the ball comes out at the end They're gonna rule that it's a catch and that Giles Jackson was tackled by McKinney And so it's a first down for the Wolverines here's gonna be a good one for Dave to see if he completes the act of the catch And well, he definitely caught it the question is did McKinney punch it out before he went down and of course if it is in fact a catch and then ruled potentially a fumble then you would have to see if there was an immediate recovery Michigan needs to snap the ball here And they do Patterson Stepping up throws a deep ball and way overthrown going for Peoples Jones Josh Joe again in coverage Greg you as surprised as I am that for whatever reason Michigan has totally abandoned the run game yeah, they used it as a decoy on the first snap. Yeah, they just faked it and threw it out to Ronnie Bell, but 
That was their bread and butter. Sure. In the first half of this football game, so you'd think they'd get back to it sooner than later. Early third quarter here at the Verbo Citrus Bowl. First game of the new year. Two iconic programs. Two of the top four winningest of all time. Haskins off left tackle gets maybe a yard. Michigan trying to get its 10th win of the season. Alabama looking for win number 11 on the year. Big third down here from Michigan. Trying to extend this drive and trying to get a quick snap or at least take a picture of what Alabama's trying to do defensively. That's what they'll do. They'll take a picture, get a good look. And Alabama in this look, it looks like they're trying to double cover the slot receiver, Ronnie Bell. There's two defenders that are over the top, but as soon as Michigan checks, it looks like Alabama's going to make a check as well. Pressure coming off the edge, and Patterson goes down. And Xavier McKinney just way too fast off the edge. The first team All-SEC safety with the takedown back at the 41. And Haskins' responsibility is to block inside out. And unfortunately, he stays far too long on the inside, and he can't get out there in time to get a piece of McKinney, who's barreling at full speed towards the back of Shea Patterson. That was a good job by Golden, the defensive coordinator, and an excellent tackle by Xavier McKinney, but an unfortunate lapse in protection for Haskins. So Robbins to punt it. Jalen Waddle is deep, and it almost got blocked. In fact, it did. It did deflect it. Ale Cajo with his third block of the season for Alabama. And it only ends up being a 19-yard punt. The Tide will set up shop near its 40-yard line after Cajo gets to this punt by Robbins and gets a piece of it. Never ceases to amaze. The Verbo Citrus Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? PlayStation 4, the best place to play. And the Jeep Big Finish event. So hurry in, end the year with a great deal. An incredibly entertaining way to kick off 2020. Let's take a look now at our second half impact players. Brought to you by Lexus. So far, defensively, Levert Hill has had a couple moments, but for the most part, they've been able to take advantage of him, and Uche has been completely non-existent. As far as Alabama, Najee Harris and Jalen Waddell need to get going a little bit. If you look at Waddell, he only has one target and zero reception. That target was a drop on a third down. Working against man coverage, he's their most explosive weapon, and at some point, they're going to start featuring him in the passing game. Going to be a swing pass to Ruggs, and Michigan was all over it. Ruggs dropped at the line of scrimmage. Glasgow and Cameron McGrone able to chase him down. That's a win for Michigan, considering a first down. Alabama has thrown 168 yards and two touchdowns. Greg, that's good film study by Michigan on defense. Knowing the personnel, formation, the motion, what was going to come of it, area of the field, really well done by Don Brown's group. Sixth in the country in total defense. The Wolverines. Robinson gets the carry. We haven't called his name very often. Cameron McGrone and Uche team up on the tackle there for Michigan. It'll be third and long. And McGrone has done such a great job this year. Really, it's first time receiving significant action. He's got a little bit of Devin Bush in him. Now, is he as fast? Probably not. Is he as instinctive at this point of his career? Probably not. But he has an extremely bright future there at middle linebacker. He's been the backbone. He's been a racer at the second level for the Wolverines defense. Alabama still has not converted on third down today. Only three attempts on third and seven. Jones gets hit as he throws it deep. Ruggs, and Ruggs can't come up with it incomplete. Either Ruggs is injured or in disbelief that he didn't hang out of the ball, but it looks like the former. He's shaken up. Mac Jones again still makes a pretty darn good throw down the field facing pressure. We referenced Uche. At some point, he's going to have to make an impact on this game, and there he is right on cue. A couple plays later in an obvious passing situation, he's able to deliver a big hit that caused 
Mac Jones delivered the ball just slightly off target to the inside. You see a player like Ruggs go down, and this is what a lot of college players point to for the reason that many of them sit out as they see a player like Henry Ruggs, who is a likely first round draft pick, getting injured. They hope he's okay. He just landed awkwardly on that football there on the left side, and he's had some injury history this year. It's been a little banged up throughout the course of the season. Had some rib issues yes. and some other problems. Right. So you have to wonder if he landed on the football and might have caused some irritation to his midsection. I, I do like the fact that, and again, hopefully Ruggs okay, that for the most part, both these teams are well represented by the guys that have an opportunity to go to the NFL. Josh Uche for Michigan has already announced he's going to go pro. Uh, he could have gotten another year. He's a senior, but he could have gotten another year because he had a medical redshirt back in 2016. All the Alabama guys saved two starters on defense, uh, Terrell Lewis and Trayvon Diggs, although Diggs is a senior. But everybody else is going. You got to appreciate that. I mean, that's, that's a reference to culture. And, and I, hey, everyone's got their own circumstances, and if you feel you're best suited by going and beginning your training for the NFL, by all means, I get it. I just couldn't imagine passing up on the opportunity to play with my guys one more time. You know, my final game was in the stadium, and it's one of the best memories I've ever had in my entire life. And I just, I really hope the guys that do decide to forego the opportunity to play in a bowl game, I hope down the road they don't regret it. They probably won't. I mean, Christian McCaffrey, I don't think, played a bowl game. Leonard Fournette didn't play in a bowl game. But for the most part, it's just, I love the idea that these guys are committed and, and are giving it their best effort here on New Year's Day. Well, and you have a player in, in Dylan Moses who's hurt, who couldn't play anyway, but he told Nick Saban this week, said, I, I want to come back. We have unfinished business. I know I could go to the NFL, probably be a first-round draft pick, but I want to go for one more run with the guys. Good punt. It does check up, though, take a Michigan balance all the way back near the 20-yard line. You can take an inside look at the college football playoff streaming on ESPN Plus. Episode 1 follows all four teams getting ready for the semifinals, while Episode 2, released yesterday, follows the day surrounding the semifinals. And looking ahead, Episode 3 will be released on January 9th, and will follow LSU and Clemson as they get ready for the title game. Inside the college football playoffs, currently streaming on ESPN Plus. Michigan takes over early third, trailing by five. Shea Patterson. His completion percentage has not been great all year, but he's made timely plays all year, including in this game. And he hasn't turned the ball over really all year. And neither in this game. Charbonnet gets the carry running to the right. He's out to the 24, brought down by Jared Maiden. And that's a big reason for his play in the second half of the season. Those turnover woes that happened in the first few games, they've gone by the wayside. And that's all a reflection on comfort. He was in a new offense. This is your last year, too. You want to make it special. And I feel like he was pressing, trying to do too much. Once he settled in and started to see the field a little better, was a little more accurate and developed more of a rapport with his receivers, he's played really excellent down the stretch. Now second and four. Giles Jackson on the end around, and he loses a yard of the play. Well, guys, just a, an update on Henry Ruggs. He is being evaluated in the tent right now. He is <coughs> unlikely to return, in the words of an Alabama official. Not saying if it's a lower body situation, but he's being evaluated. If I get more, I'll pass it along. All right, Tom, thanks. Hopefully Henry's able to return. Looks a terrific player. So fast and dynamic. Couldn't come up with that catch. Would have put Alabama in the red zone. Now Michigan faced with third and five. Patterson, long throw, and it's pulled in. Great first down. It's Ronnie Bell with Sertan in coverage. Hanging on to the ball. Really like this route by Ron Bell. It's a nice throw, too. A great job of protection. How about Charbonnet stepping up in the A-gap and making his presence felt? They motion Bell down to the stack, which created a little more separation. It's a good throw and catch for the conversion. Greg, that's kind of given Alabama a little dose of their own medicine. They love to do the exact same thing in their bunch and stack looks. Midway through the quarter, 
Patterson going down the seam, and he overshot the receiver again. Going for Ronnie Bell, was well covered by Shaheem Carter and Josh Joe. There's one area where Shea Patterson really needs to improve is his deep ball accuracy. I mean, there have been so many times throughout the course of the season where he's overthrown wide receivers. Look, if anything, underthrow the wide receiver. Give them a chance. But when you miss guys by five and six yards down the field, they're never going to have a chance to get their hands on the football. And that's one area where he really needs to tighten it up because they've left some big plays on the field. Charbonnet running. And Satan and run support makes the head short gain. It'll bring up third down long. Patterson's a senior. And either of you think he has a chance to, to play at the next level? Yeah, uh, I do. Uh, I think he's got enough skill. He's got a great athletic build, can move. He's a, almost a perfect backup quarterback in some ways because he can run around and create some problems. He's just got to tighten up a few things with his delivery and his accuracy, especially in the NFL, how often they require you to throw the ball down the field. Well, his last game at Michigan. Third and eight. Stands in the pocket, throws high. It was nearly intercepted. Bell couldn't hang on, and then Jordan Battle. I don't know if in the shade he lost it a little bit, but Battle reaction seemed like maybe he picked it up late. And Shea Patterson just a little off the mark here. But anticipated throw. I feel like Bell could have gotten his hands up just a hair earlier. It was, as if his, it was as if he wasn't quite ready for the ball to be delivered at that point because... He's got a catch that. Yeah, that's one you got to yeah. have. I just think he was a little late picking it up out of Shea Patterson's hand. So far, Michigan has not been afraid to punt it at Jalen Waddle. See what they do here. Waddle's under it, and he breaks the tackle. Makes a guy miss. Good coverage, though, overall by Michigan. Wrapping him up at the 35. A 12-yard return after a 46-yard punt. Welcome to the only bowler. Premieres Monday, 8, 7 Central on ABC. Today, clutch delivery brought to you by Chipotle. It was the first play of the game. Dialing up a shot play to Jerry Judy and one-on-one -on -one against Daxton Hill. Mac Jones throws an absolute strike. Look at the stride by Judy. Unbelievable. And then finding a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with Devontae Smith working against LaVert Hill. A little out and up, but still pretty well covered. Just a better throw and catch. Mac Jones has done a really good job today taking advantage of those shot plays down the field and not trying to force the issue when things have been covered. Been very efficient against the quality Michigan defense and the quality Michigan defensive secondary. Fourth start of the season for Mac Jones, 21-year-old redshirt sophomore. He's already graduated. He finds Waddle out in space. His first catch wrapped up at about a 41-yard line. Obviously, Jones is starting for the injured two at Tonga Vailoa, who on November 16th to Mississippi State, a season-ending hip injury. Two is here, and got a crutch under that left arm. Will Tua, who's the number 12 prospect, according to Todd McShick, go to the NFL, or will he come back for one more year in Tuscaloosa? Penalty marker and talking with Nick Saban, you got the sense that he didn't know. I mean, he, he thought it could go either way with Tua. Ball start, 70, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. You know, he didn't know, but it was very clear that he liked the process that Tua was taking in terms of educating himself on all of the important factors and the decisions that have to be made and listening to the right people. I think Nick Saban feels confident about that side of it. Okay, they're getting as much information as possible, including consulting experts on the hip and, and whether or not he'll be available come April. Huge hole for Robinson, got the first down more into Michigan territory. Pinballs forward all the way to the 45-yard line. Gain of 18 for Brian Robinson. So much has been made about Najee Harris, but don't forget Brian Robinson. This guy's a freight train. Big body kid from Northport, Alabama that loves to get north and south. Not quite as dynamic as Najee, but really good north and south. Robinson in trouble here. Going to lose yardage. It was Daxton Hill through freshman safety. They really are high on who was there for Michigan. And Tua, obviously without the injury, is going to be higher on McShay's board. Perhaps number one overall, but Chaburro has been so great this year. I mean, look at all the guys that are 
potentially first round picks and, and Nick said look if you're not a top 15 pick you should be playing in a bowl game and he actually said other than Tua nobody else was in terms of the information he's received from scouts nobody else top 15 and there is a possibility that Jerry Judy didn't even send in his papers so widely assume that he is a top 15 pick though Mac Jones throwing it away there with some pressure from Hutchinson you no, know, guys, I think there's this fear all the time that guys are going to get injured. And, and instead of really looking at the percentages, your, your chances of not getting injured far outweigh actually being injured. And it's another opportunity for your resume to be strengthened against a quality opponent, for evaluators to study to make decisions on you. And I think most guys are really starting to see that right now. Alabama still 0 for first down on third. Flag down. It's going to be third and 20. Jed Wills, one of the guys on the list for the NFL move. Start, 74, offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. As Jed Wills on the right side, the right tackle, you're going to see him twitch just a little bit right before the snap. Watch his right leg. Yep, just a little twitch. A good job by the official seeing it and making the call. He had Uche lined up over him, who's got eight and a half sacks on the year. I don't blame him for twitching early. <laughs> that guy's breathing fire off the edge. Uche playing in his final game. Got to think Don Brown offensively here. You just try to get home with your front four, but you need to put pass it in the back end and see if he drops a little deep to make sure that they can tackle Alabama in front of the sticks. Jones on third down and 20. Dumps it off underneath to Forrestal. And he is brought down. They did get a good chunk of it back, but it is going to be fourth down. Josh Metellus made the play for the Wolverines, and he might be banged up a little bit as he comes to the sideline, favoring that right arm. Yeah. Forrest all got uh, missed four games uh, because of a voice box injury, but is back playing in the bowl game for Alabama. When are you going to start missing games for that? I almost <laughs> did. Your wish almost came true today, pal. <laughs> Watch for the fake if you're Michigan's defense here. If Alabama might dial up a fake, but no, it's not looking like it. Excellent punt. It goes out of bounds at three. This is the second time Bernier has pinned Michigan inside the three-yard line, or inside the five anyway. They put it out at the four. Aerial Cups provided by Goodyear, recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear, more driven. What a perfect day for football. And just picturesque. And it's so cool. You look at the end zone, you see Michigan on the oh, side. Just unbelievable. Alabama on the get other. Goosebumps just thinking about it. I mean, just to see these two uniforms on the field and the players that occupy those uniforms and the coaches that are patrolling the sideline, it doesn't get any better than this. It just does not get any better than Michigan and Alabama on New Year's Day on ABC. Gotta love it. On first down, Michigan just gonna hand it off to Haskins. And obviously, so much history between the two programs. Uh, there was a great article on ESPN.com chronicling the personalities of Nick Saban and Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh's love for khakis and Judge Judy and going shirtless at a camp in <laughs> Alabama and Nick Saban calling out reporters saying that every time they praise his team is rat poison. <laughs> it's funny because they both go about it differently. That's yeah they do. Here's Haskins stood up in the mid two. One thing about these two programs, though, is they're built similar. Yeah, but both coaches, completely different personalities. Nick Saban, very regimented. Jim Harbaugh, a little more unpredictable in regards to just how he operates. But for the most part, the teams are trying to be built from inside out. It's built with a physical mindset that we're going to compete, we're going to fight, and we're going to try to win at the line of scrimmage. So both coaches doing it very differently, but the goals of the organization remain the same. On third down and three, Patterson dumps it off and running room for Haskins past the 25, not near the 30-yard line. Well, think how long Nick Saban's been around. He coached against Jim Harbaugh when Harbaugh played in the NFL with the Colts when Saban was the D coordinator for the Browns. And I love this design. You have one-on-one -on -one against a linebacker who's actually opposite where Haskins was lined up in the backfield. Really difficult to expect 
Christian Harris to be able to cover that one-on-one -on -one right into the flat. That was a good call by offensive coordinator Josh Gaddis. Yeah, they've been really good on third down, 6 of 12. Patterson on first down, waiting, and takes off as he sees him green in front of him. And then he stiff arms McKinney. Out of bounds near the line of the game. Oh, man, another big opportunity potentially for Jay Patterson. As he's standing back there, look at the space deep. And he's going to have a wide receiver run to it. That's Nico Collins. It just took a little too long to develop, but another huge opportunity potentially for Michigan that was left on the field. Shea Patterson could have located big Nico Collins. Gain of eight for Patterson. He elected to run instead. He'll hand it off to the true freshman Charbonnet. First down for Michigan. Both Charbonnet uh, and Haskins will be back next year. This offense, depending on who the quarterback is, it's going to be interesting because you've got some talented wide receiver. They obviously love Giles Jackson. He's a true freshman. You have Mike Sane were still. They're going to be good at skill. There's no denying that. It's just can you replace the presence and the leadership that you get from Runyon and Bredesen? Sure. And on Wendy, those are the guys up front, those are tone setters, and they got to find adequate replacements for the offensive line. Here's Patterson going deep again, and again it's off target. Tried to hit Bell. Carter was running with him. Pretty good coverage here by Carter. They love this slot fade. To try to get Ronnie Bell in a man-to-man -man situation with no safety help over the top. They got the matchup they wanted. That's exactly what they wanted, but yet again, another situation in which Shea Patterson overthrows the intended receiver down the field. If that ball's underthrown, then Ronnie Bell has a chance to at least make a play on it, or maybe pick up 15 yards because of pass interference. He's at four or five of those today on deep bowl. There's movement by the receiver. Nico Collins. Jim Harbaugh's irate. He, he seen was offside on the corner. Number four, offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. He's mad because he thought Sir Tan should have been flagged, not Nico Collins, his guy. You don't see that very often. I mean, I, I've seen defensive linemen jump in the neutral zone, but seldom have I ever seen a, a corner but jump what, in the neutral zone. Was he, though? Was he in the neutral zone? Looked like he was to me. Another flag. All right, let's bring Dave Katai in. Once we get the call here from Michael Mothershed. False guard, number 73, offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. So that's on Mayfield, the right tackle. Let's go back to the other, the other one here, Dave. Your thoughts on whether this should have been on Sertan. Well, as we saw earlier in the game, if the defense actually comes into the neutral zone and that causes a man adjacent or head up to move, Okay, then it's going to be on the defense. Now you take a look at this. Does he come into the neutral zone? I don't think enough to put it on the defense. I'm sure a screen pass here from Michigan. Can they get way behind the sticks? They've relied on the screen to try to get him into a little more manageable third down. I'm just glad Dave agreed with me because you're getting cocky over there, McElroy, with your <laughs> rules knowledge. Patterson looking. Everybody covered. And now he completes it. To Bell, what a play by Patterson hanging in there and then threw it into traffic. Bell made the catch. Gain of 16. Great patience by Shea Patterson. Trying to work a little quick game. The offensive line holds up. He slides by a little time, keeps his eyes downfield, and delivers the ball accurately to Bell as he crosses field. That was a good job by Shea Patterson. What a huge pickup to make this third down very manageable. And they got True Wilson, a former walk-on, a senior from Warren, Michigan, in the game, running back. To help block, Patterson fires complete first down into Alabama territory to the 40-yard line. It's Collins with the catch and a gain of 12. Tell you what, Greg, Greg, there. Uh, Sid Patterson's doing a remarkable job of feeling the pocket, seeing the field. That was beautifully done. He was trying to work Sanders still on the little option route. Wasn't there. Didn't like the decision of Sanders still to work inside. He keeps his eyes downfield and finds number two in the, in the progression. Excellent work by Shea. 
Nick Saban is hot. His team leads by five. 21 16 Alabama over Michigan. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. SC.com. An absolutely spectacular day in Orlando as we welcome you back to the Verbo Citrus Bowl on ABC as part of the Capital One Bowl Mania. And if he's saving his New Year's resolutions to yell less and don't break any headsets, it's already out the window. As right here, he loses the headset. He's holding uh, just <laughs> one headphone. I wonder if he just holds that headphone up to the side of his head the rest of the day. I they oh, gave they him a fresh it. one. You think? They repaired it. Oh, did they? Oh, he's they, all set. They work fast at Alabama, as you know, Greg. <laughs> they, they got people for everything. Nobody's safe on that sideline right now. He probably has a signed headset guy. Just <laughs> exclusively to replace that headset. Probably. That's a good point. I don't understand this. He does have an assigned headset, I would assume. His name's Tom Luganville. He's down there as well. <laughs> Michigan trailing by five at the Alabama 40-yard line. Hassan Haskins. And only two yards there. It's Anthony Jennings, who was the first guy to get a piece of him, is at a tight end, Sean McEwen, trying to block him. It's a great job by Anthony Jennings. And see what he's been an unsung hero for this defense. They have had their fair share of issues this year. Both against the run and occasionally through the air, but Anthony Jennings has been a reliable piece and was voted team captain as a result. Alabama leading by five, trying to get to 11 wins for the ninth straight year, which would be the longest ever. AP poll era. Michigan trying to get win number 10 for the fourth time in five years. Patterson on a design quarterback run. Lowers the shoulder with Josh Joe, the corner. Preparing to drill him, and it's a gain of about nine. It's a nice run by Shea Patterson. Byron Young on the end of the line of scrimmage. I think you got two downs to get it here if you're Michigan, so I'd be surprised if they didn't go for it, even if they were stopped. So don't be shocked either. In this spot, I think you take a shot. You Knowing the fourth down, you come back, you have a chance at it. Alabama and a real, real aggressive defense. They take a shot downfield. Instead, they've handed off, and it's going to be close here. I thought Haskins' initial surge was enough, and it looks like it will be a first down. Keep in mind, too, that at the end of the first half, Quinn Nordine made a 57-yard field goal, which tied a Michigan record. But a fresh set of downs for the Wolverines at the 30-yard line. And Greg, this has been a trouble zone for this Michigan offense. This is where they've stalled. They've got to come away with a touchdown on this drive now. They're in the red area. Patterson back to throw. Everybody covered, and Patterson's going to get sick. The ball's out. And Charbonnet with a heads-up play to pounce on it. Shane Lee, true freshman, punched it out as he was dragging down Patterson. It is a 13-yard loss. And for the most part, Chardonnay's done a great job in protection today. However, this time, Shane Lee is able to beat him to the inside. Shea Patterson with only one hand on the football there. It looked as though it got dislodged. And heads up play by Chardonnay after struggling there in protection to hop on the football to preserve second down. Did you see Patterson? He was trying to hold on to Anthony Jennings with his left arm. That, that didn't work so well. He was trying to hold him to, from going after that loose football. Worked enough, I guess. Charmin came up with the ball. Now Patterson throws incomplete. Xavier McKinney bearing down on the receiver, Ronnie Bell, and Bell put it on the deck. Maybe here in the footsteps. An accurate throw from Patterson on the RPO, and that was without question because of the footsteps. Some T Rex arms there over the middle. And careful by Xavier McKinney to make sure he doesn't launch towards the header neck area. Obviously, that's a defenseless player, but I don't think he launched. There didn't look like an indicator there, Dave Kataya, as he went to initiate the contact. I agree. Patterson passing today on third down. Four of eight. But this is third and 23. Can they get enough to give the field goal kicker a chance? 
They dump it off to Jackson. He gets to the 40s. Tan on the tackle. You're looking at a 58 or 59 yard field goal try. It's fourth down about 20. It also just hunt the ball. Yeah, you got to punt. At the end of the half to try one from here is one thing because if it's short or if it's no good, no problem, end of half. But if you try one from here, then you're potentially seeing Alabama up with great field position. So I agree with the decision to punt here by Jim Harbaugh. Boy, that's sack. And forced fumble by Shane Lee on first down. When they got to the 30-yard line of Alabama was huge. Will Hart, the punter. Waddle uh, waving for it, and he's got it at the Alabama nine-yard line. Early fourth quarter, Bama by five. Modern Family next Wednesday on ABC. Shaping up to be a great finish between these two archetype college football programs, Bama and Michigan, two of the top four winning his programs. It's a five-point Alabama lead. Take a look at what's in store this postseason, brought to you by Macy's. We have the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual coming up at 5 Eastern on ESPN about an hour or so from now, followed by Georgia and Taylor in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Other games coming up, including the College Football Playoff National Championship presented by AT&T, LSU, and Clemson. Alabama taking over inside its 10-yard line. They try to run it on first down, and Najee Harris is going nowhere. Cameron McGrone has come to play here in the second half. He and Josh Mattels were both there for the Wolverines. I'll tell you what, McGrone is really starting to play up to the caliber that we saw from him throughout the course of the regular season. Really struggled in the first three quarters of that Ohio State game to play better down the stretch. And like you said, Dave, here in the second half, he's been an immovable force. There on the defensive side of the football. Got 10 tackles for a loss now in the year. That was a one-yard setback on second and 11. Jones from his goal line. The pass is batted down. It was McGrone again. It'll bring up third down and 11 from inside the Alabama 10. Mac Jones throwing all over him. And a huge third down here from Alabama. Expect something somewhat high percentage. Don't want to get too aggressive dropping into your own end zone. Make the high percentage completion. Something probably did the number three. Jones from his end zone throws for Judy, and it's caught for a first down. He got open quickly, and it was a terrific throw by Mac Jones. Gain of 14 and a first down. And this bunch alignment's so tough. And you see Judy just hesitate, allowing things to clear out for him so he can work that out route against inside leverage. That was excellent design. And clearly extremely well coached. So many times receivers are in a rush to get to where they need to go. That time Judy hesitating to allow himself a little time to separate. Jalen Waddle motioning into the backfield as Jones throws it deep and Judy caught it on the run at midfield in Michigan territory inside the 30. And they finally get him down around the 20 yard line. 58 yard pass play for Alabama in the Michigan red zone. And a good job by the offensive line holding up just long enough. <laughs> Mac Jones Ward. He put just enough touch on the football to allow Judy to run under it and a great catch on a little bit of a low thrown football. Judy doesn't even break stride. Beautifully done by Mac Jones and Jerry Judy on a yards after catch. Keep in mind Henry Ruggs has not returned after getting injured in the third quarter. Jones play action. Moves to his right. Now looking back this way. Wide open is Forrest. All touchdown Alabama. There is a penalty flag down in the secondary. It looks like it's going to be on Michigan. This is going to stand for Miller Forstall. Holding number 29 defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. Third touchdown pass for Mac Jones today. Welcome back, Miller Forstall, who had missed several games due to injury, but back to the ball game, making his presence felt. Man, this was a beautiful job. They have thrown time and time again that wheel route to Harris on the off play action. This time, they clearly covered. Look, two defenders for Michigan run with Harris. They slip Forrestal out the seam, and Jones delivers a strike. Beautiful design from Steve Sarkeesian. 
Well, Michigan had the lead at halftime, but the Wolverines haven't scored yet in the second half. And Alabama now leads by 12. Mac Jones made a couple of terrific throws on that drive. Beautifully executed by Alabama. Miller forced off his pay dirt. And the tie in command here in the fourth in Orlando. Searching for a beat. All the nation's best price of just six forty nine. Pizza, pizza. The Verbo Citrus Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Verbo. Travel better together. In part by the Ford F one fifty, built Ford Tough, and Pacific Life. One hundred fifty years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. Alabama trying to secure the Verbo Citrus Bowl trophy. And what would be probably its best win of the season. They did beat Texas A&M. But this is a top 15 Michigan team that has nine wins. Beat Notre Dame, beat Iowa. Of course, Alabama playing today without its best player, too. It's hung about all, but man, quarterback Mac Jones done an excellent job. And they pop it up in the air and it's fair caught at the 34. So that's going to give Michigan pretty good field position. I want to go back to this touchdown. It's just such great designs. Play action. They have hit Najee Harris on this route. It's a wheel route multiple times this year. Clearly Michigan is prepared for it. So you see two defenders chase Najee Harris. One tries to tackle him in Glasgow, you see. <laughs> but next thing you know, you slip out Miller Forrest all there into the seam area. And he is completely unaccounted for, even though there were enough defenders there to take away both targets. Just a beautiful design and great execution from Matt Jones and Miller Forrestal. Michigan goes back to the ground game on first down as Lee stands up. Haskins was checking with John in the studio. Dave, it's been a good battle this afternoon in the Outback Bowl between Minnesota and Auburn. Tanner Morgan hooking up with Tyler Johnson. 74 yards on the touchdown catch. His second touchdown of the game. Minnesota up 31-24, under five minutes to go on ESPN. And that would be a great win for Minnesota. Auburn, of course, knocked off Alabama in the Iron Bowl. Second and six for Michigan. Patterson off play action. Throws complete. And Nico Collins is out near midfield. So it's a first down for the Wolverines as we near the nine-minute mark. A gain of 11 on the play. Obviously, Michigan doesn't need to get into hyperspeed just yet. It is a multi-score game, so you got to be cognizant of the clock. See them start to sprinkle in a little tempo, but not going high octane just yet. But again, their issue, as Tom mentioned earlier, is once I, you know, they get inside the 35-yard line, and all of a sudden, they start having negative plays. They've been able to move the ball in Alabama. It's just finishing drives has been the issue. Davis with pressure. Patterson on the run. And it's incomplete through the hands of Collins. Would have had positive yardage if he made the catch. You know, Greg, I'm a little surprised uh, with the run game being so successful for Michigan in the first half. Haven't committed to it as much in the second half, but when they've done it with quarterback, which is what the defense for Alabama has been worried about, they've been very, very successful. I'm a little surprised that they haven't taken more advantage of forcing Alabama to have to, you know, account for that extra gap that the quarterback creates by running the football. Yeah, there haven't been any opportunities so far. For Shea Patterson to really contribute with his legs. You would think those opportunities may come, though, as they get to more of a spread pass happy look. On the run and going down to the ground is Haskins, thrown down by Christian Harris, who's made a couple plays in Michigan's backfield today. And a great job here by the backside linebacker, Christian Harris, just working through some traffic on the inside, reading out. You see Eubanks, the tight end number 82, trying to save a life. However, the talented freshman who's going to be an absolute superstar in time makes the play in the backfield to set up a third and long. Here's Michigan in four down territory. Third and 11, nearing eight minutes to go. We'll see what kind of a play call we get from Gaddis. First time play caller. He was the wide receivers coach at Alabama last year and the co-offensive coordinator. Hard away by Jim Hubbard. Patterson's going to take a shot here on third and long. And again, it's overthrown. Going for Sainer still, but he's been long on just about every deep ball today. 
And it's fourth and 11. I think he got a punt now. He didn't get anything on third down, and they will get it. Just at some point, Shea Patterson has to make that adjustment. I mean, I've counted five different examples today where he's overthrown deep balls, and not just by a little bit, by a yard or two. Yeah. We're talking five or six yards in most cases, and he's got big physical jump ball built yeah. wide receivers. You've got to use the receiver's length to your own advantage, and he hasn't done that because he's overthrown them on so many different occasions. Nick Saban might lose another headset. He just was jumping up and down as Alabama had 12 men on the field and had to burn a timeout. No headset is safe today. What? The Battler premieres Monday, 8 7 Central on ABC. Alabama trying to finish out this game and get win number 11, outscoring Michigan 14 0 in the second half. 12 point tied lead at the eight minute mark of the fourth. Bull Mania keeps rolling on after New Year's. Two more games tomorrow on ESPN and the ESPN app. To get smarter, Birmingham Bowl, followed by the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville. Michigan to punt after another overthrow, the seventh of the day, but officially by Shea Patterson. Waddle with a fair catch around the 15. An impressive drive from Mac Jones in the Alabama offense. Here's third down conversion to Judy on the out route. Beautifully thrown and a great round. I love this anticipation. Stepping up in the pocket. Pocket isn't very sound. So you got to lose it a little early than you want to. You do. You put air under and allow Judy to run underneath it. And this may be the best time of them all. Trying to fake out the wheel route off the left side. Is that you slip Miller Forrest all up the seam. Nobody's home. Because of the double coverage and the bust in coverage by the Michigan defense. Just excellent stuff from Mac Jones off play action today. See if Alabama just runs the ball here, tries to take some time off the clock with Harris, but he is dumped at the line of scrimmage. Cameron McGrone again. Second down, inside eight minutes to go. Hey, Greg, what's so impressive for me about Matt Jones is prior to the touchdown pass, on the play you just diagrammed to Judy, when you look at when the ball left Matt Jones' hand, Jerry Judy's in the middle of the field, and then you look at where he caught it. Just the anticipation to stay within the pocket and throw a guy open was exceptional, especially knowing just how congested that pocket was. I mean, that pocket was collapsing around him. And that's the big difference between a sack and incompletion and a huge play was that anticipation that Mac Jones showed. Jones to throw again. Now he steps up and runs instead, and he gets leveled by McGrone and Michael Dana. So this is going to be third down and long. Good play here for Michigan's defense. Almost have to come up with a stop here as we're inside seven minutes to go, knowing that they need two scores, two touchdowns, trailing by 12. Let's see if, if Don Brown decides to bring pressure because so many times over the course of his career, when in doubt, he's going to hit you up with pressure and trying to create isolations. Here's his best pass rusher, Uche, who's lined up over Alabama's weakest offensive lineman, Neal. Here comes McGrone as well. Jones gets out of there and flips it oh, out of bounds, throwing it away. So the clock stops with 6.27 to go, and Alabama will have to punt it back to Michigan, which was able to create a three and out defensively. Lost about a minute and a half on the clock. That was a huge stop from Michigan defensively. Hadn't really had a ton of answers at times for Jerry Judy, but good coverage and a good job of trying to overload the protection. Donovan Peoples-Jones is back deep for Michigan. And it's a short kick, and the fair catch made around the 47 of Michigan, so the Wolverines with good field position. Two more bowl games on January 2nd. That's... Tomorrow, Boston College, Cincinnati, Ticket Smarter, Birmingham Bowl, Indiana, Tennessee, Tax Slayer, Gator Bowl at 7 Eastern Time. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Great McElroy, Tom Williamville, and Dave Pat here at the Burbo 
the citrus bowl. Alabama leading Michigan 28-16. Jay Patterson is thrown for touchdown, but Mac Jones has three in those 322 yards, the fourth most in Alabama Bowl history. And Jerry Judy, a career high, 204 receiving yards. He has been spectacular as usual. Look at the clock. Almost don't want this to end. Michigan and Alabama, it's only the fifth time they've played. Just enjoying all the history. Almost two centuries worth of these two iconic programs packaged into this version. Two fo uh, top 15 teams. As Patterson throws another deep ball that's nowhere near his guy, Shaheen Carter, is there for Alabama for the easy interception at the tied 25 yard line. Flexibility the miscommunication there between Patterson and his receiver. You're going to see Eubanks run out and then all of a sudden work his way back up the field. As soon as he saw a defender standing in the zone that he was trying to occupy with his route, he turned the field, probably thinking that Jay Patterson was going to escape and create a scramble opportunity. Jay Patterson threw it where he thought Eubanks would be. And it was easily intercepted. You see Shea Patterson obviously disappointed with the result. He's done a lot of nice things today. That time, just not on the same page with his wide receiver. It's only his seventh interception of the season and the first turnover by Michigan today. And now Alabama with 6.13 on the clock. And take some time off of it. They're making sure upstairs that Carter got a foot down. It looked like he did. You gotta think if you're Alabama here too. Just want to lean on that run game, lean on that offensive line. As we take a look to see here, to main, does he maintain control? See the foot was dragging. It looks as though the control was pretty obvious there. And the left arm. See the toe dragging. Yeah, in bounds. Beautifully done there. What an effort. And Alabama will run it. Here's Harris. Makes it to the 30-yard line. It's a good gain on first down. Picking up five yards. The next snap will come with about five and a half minutes to go, you would imagine. Look, we're going to see a heavy dose of Nadi Harris here in the plays to come. If you throw it at all, it's going to be behind the line of scrimmage. So you see just the tail of the tape. Alabama, those adjustments at halftime, coming right out in the first drive of the third quarter, hitting the big play to Smith. It's been the difference so far in the ball game. Now the defense, too, for Alabama, much better this half than the first half when it looked like Michigan was going to rack up 600 yards. No big hit that time on Harris by Jordan Glasgow. Maybe a half yard gain, so critical third down again here for Michigan's defense. Next snap for Alabama will come inside five minutes to go. Alabama number one all time with 40 bowl wins. USC is the next closest with 35. And this would also hand Michigan its fourth consecutive bowl loss under Jim Harbaugh. Third three. Jones to pass. And it's caught by first all. It is a first down. Josh Metellus with the tackle, but that was huge for Nick Saban's team. Don't forget to tune in to the ESPN app for the post-game trophy ceremony presented by Capital One immediately following the game. This would be nine straight 11 win seasons and obviously this looking at the overall year is not what Alabama fans hoped for or expected having been in every single college football playoff but still to go 11 and 2 without one of the best players in college football to a tongue of Iowa and losing to two really good teams one being maybe the best team LSU as Harris takes it out past the 40-yard line. You could make an argument, Greg, it's one of the better coaching jobs that Nick Saban and his Alabama staff have 
have done in relationship to the youth, the injuries, the quarterback situation. You had some coaches changes. Really impressive. We got a timeout here with 3.58 to go. Alabama in command. Trying to salt this one away. And welcome back to Camping World Stadium in Orlando, the Verbo Citrus Bowl. Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, and Tom Lugan built. Alabama leading 28-16. Later today on ESPN and the ESPN app. For about a half an hour away or so from the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual, Oregon taking on Wisconsin, and then it's Georgia Baylor tonight in the All-State Sugar Bowl. I can't wait for the Rose Bowl. I just, with what Wisconsin's done forever and what Oregon's trying to become, there's so many storylines within the story, and what should be a great matchup. They get a first down run, Najee Harris carrying Wolverines. Finally, they get him to the ground at the 39-yard line, and that play right there, kind of a microcosm of the second half when Alabama became much better running the football as Michigan was the dominant run team in the first half. Najee Harris is just so big and so strong. Even with five or six Michigan Wolverines all over them, the momentum continues on. Might be playing his final game here at the University of Alabama, but what a year he's had both running the football and being a contribution, a contributor coming out of the backfield to the passing game. Davenport again, or excuse me, uh, Harris. What a great to tackle again. Wow, unbelievable. The first down. But uh, just being told now some uh, some awful news from uh, the NBA that we want to pass along so folks are aware of what's going on David Stern longtime NBA commissioner uh, passed away at age 77 inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 2014 recently suffered brain hemorrhaging and was hospitalized a couple weeks ago and sad to pass along the news that uh, Com Commissioner Stern uh, passed away today at age 77. Condolences to to his family and you know, life well lived, man. It made a huge impact on sport that we all love and follow. And we're certainly thinking about his loved ones and family and the entire NBA community. Yep. Meanwhile, Michigan inside the 25, trying to put this one away. Inside three minutes to go, just keeping it on the ground with Najee Harris. And again, it takes a handful of Michigan players to stop momentum. And Jim Harbaugh will use a timeout. He'll have one left. Well, Alabama will open next season September 5th in Dallas against USC. They'll also play Georgia in September. So two of their first three games are against SC and Georgia. They'll go to LSU. A&M and Auburn will come to Tuscaloosa. And obviously... The 2020 Alabama season is going to be all about whether Tua Tonga Bailoa is back or whether he's in the NFL. Because if he's back, look out. And if he's in the NFL, who is it? Is it his brother Talia Tonga Bailoa that's the quarterback? Is it Mac Jones? Is it Bryce Young, a five star recruit who's coming in? Yeah, and I know, Lugs, you feel very strongly about Bryce Young's abilities, and he's going to be graduating early yep. and contributing in the spring, so it'll be. A hard-fought competition, but of course, all for naught if big number 13 decides to return to Tuscaloosa for his senior year. I'll be refreshing my Twitter constantly for the next <laughs> 19 days. But just to repeat your opinion from earlier today, your opinion is you, you think he's going to come back. I do too. You do too, Tom. Absolutely. Huh? I think it's so important to put your best foot forward when you're going through the evaluation process. And unfortunately for Tua, at this point, he's not going to really be properly evaluated. They'll look at the tape, but they're still going to have questions about his injury history. And that will potentially turn some teams off as to whether or not he becomes a draftable prospect. But I think he is a generational talent. I think he's a can't-miss NFL guy. Whether he comes out this year or next year, he's going to have a very bright future at the next level regardless. If he's healthy, if, if it comes back that he's healthy and he can start throwing, does that change your opinion? I mean, if it's if it's if he's a healthy do it, do you take... The sure thing you take the money now even though it's not going to be as much as maybe it would have been if he's the number one pick certainly I think it all comes down to what he gets 
in regards to the information that he's going to gather from the doctors. It's really a medical decision more than it is anything else, whether he wants to go back, whether he wants to play college football. He's on track to graduate in August, so I know that's really important to both him and his family. So a lot of factors that are going in. But if I were to guess, just knowing the timetable for his return to the field, likely targeting early April, maybe mid-April, I think he might return knowing he won't be able to showcase his abilities on the field in pro days and in workouts with professional teams prior to them making decisions. His family lives in Tuscaloosa now. They moved from Hawaii. And Talia, the backup quarterback for this game, will be a true sophomore. Harris inside the five. Or he's run out of bounds. It'll be first and goal. You know, and sorry, Dave. I was going to say with, with Tua, and I agree with you wholeheartedly, it is about medical because there are so many different factors that he's going to be evaluated upon. One of those factors is durability. And, and how will, will you be viewed from a durability standpoint? So if they say, okay, well, instead of being a top five pick, you'd be a top 20 pick. Um, that doesn't mean that he's not a top five player, but it's just a fact that it has to be considered. And I think that's something there's a part of Tua that he wants to prove to everybody. First down and goal here for Alabama. Harris trying to bounce off of tacklers. Can't wrapped up by Hudson. To me, the most fascinating thing outside of Tua's decision is do others follow suit? I mean, Jerry Judy, I think, has got to go. Well, maybe not. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he decides to come back. But some of these other receivers that, and even defensive players that are being considered late first-round picks or early second-round picks, do they say, you know what, if Tua's coming back, we're coming back with him to try to do this together? I think he is the ultimate deciding factor for a lot of these guys because they know that they're right now a late first-round pick. Their draft stock's going to be improved by number 15 being out there sharing the huddle with sure. So. I think if he decides to come back, you might see a huge trickle down in that regard. Harris forward progress stopped at two. And speaking of Jerry Judy, he is our Capital One player of the game. Just a phenomenal talent. I've seen some mock drafts that have him going number three. Career high today in receiving yards, 204. Belinikoff winner last year. Exactly what you want as a cornerstone wide receiver. I mean, just speed, character. He can do it all. Blocks, catches, runs it out of the backfield if necessary, can contribute in the return game if you want him to. He is exceptionally talented. He has a very bright future. Alabama going to hand it off there, and Harris will score with 27 seconds to go. So they reward Najee Harris for just an incredible drive. He did most of the work on that possession. And he gets his second touchdown. I was actually a little surprised that he didn't just take a knee. Me too. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> There's no Nick Saban. Usually in that scenario, he's going to take a knee. Hey, no salt in the wound. We won. Good stuff. But that particular case... That satellite camp thing was a while ago. That was a lot. <laughs> but there's a long memories with coaches. <laughs> That's a great point. Well, we talked a lot about Judy today. He got open on the very first play. 85-yard touchdown pass. Jay Patterson brought Michigan back. They actually had the lead at halftime. But Najee Harris with a couple rushing touchdowns. Devontae Harris with a nice catch. Excellent throw by Matt Jones. Jones with three touchdown passes. That one to full stall. Really well played game by the three-headed monster. That isn't the three-headed monster. Three wide receivers. <laughs> Look at Mac Jones. Very efficient, smart with the football. Did a lot of great things within the pocket and giving his receivers an opportunity. Of course, in the fourth quarter, Najee Harris making his presence felt. Some of those incredible runs, carrying defenders and. From the first play to the last play, Jerry Judy was the best player on the field today and deserving of the player of the game here. And emotions for you know Michigan players playing their final game wearing the maize and blue. They pop it up into the air again. And this time there's no fair catch. Good return by Michael Barrett. 
Not near midfield, but only 19 seconds to go in the game. Tonight on ESPN, after the Sugar Bowl, catch SVP Sports Center post game reaction from New Orleans. A full breakdown of the Rose Bowl and a special edition of Bad Beats featuring the worst of 2019. Sports Center with SVP after Georgia Baylor on ESPN, as well as the ESPN app. We we're talking about uh, Alabama's schedule for next year. Just want to mention this before we go off the air that Michigan will open at Washington on September 5th. They will also play Wisconsin at home, Penn State at home, and go to the Buckeyes. Michigan will finish the year 9-4. It'll be the fourth straight bowl loss for Jim Harbaugh. Catch is made by Collins. See if that's the final play. Alabama, meanwhile, will win its 11th game. The ninth straight year they've won 11 games or more, the largest as uh, the spike it with one second left. The Alabama fans don't like it. But I think this may be a reaction to Nick Saban not taking a knee when there was, what, about 25 seconds left and they <laughs> went for it on the goal line? A little gamesmanship here. Between, you got to stop them. Yeah, between the sidelines, a little gamesmanship here between Jim Harbaugh and Nick Saban. Patterson gonna throw it up and it's intercepted by Job and that will end the game <laughs> Alabama wins it 35 to 16 over Michigan to capture its 11th win Not the warmest of readings either there between the two coaches. They did shake hands, but we'll check in with Tom down on the field. We'll coach a tale of two halves. You're able to run the ball in the second half and stop the run in the second half. What was the message of the team at halftime? Well, I just didn't think we played with the same kind of toughness and aggressiveness in first half that we really wanted to play and really is the culture of our team. And I thought we played a lot better in the second half. Uh, we played more nickel actually against their regular which we have more multiples of things to do and it makes us a little more experienced so that was helpful as well from your draft eligible juniors kids that chose to play in this game maybe they didn't have to they performed today what does that say about those kids well i, I you know i thought every one of them they create value you know for themselves by coming out here and playing well you know this is a great class of juniors that we have one of the best classes we've ever had and these guys all are great guys and you know they really want to play for alabama and they love playing for their team and they love their teammates so uh, i think that was really what they were saying assess the performance of mac jones here in this bowl game today mac did a great job he got us in right plays uh, you know, we didn't always play great around them. They did a better job of covering them, covering us in the first half, really, than we thought. Uh, in the second half, we did a better job of making plays on third down when we really need to. All right, thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And Lou, that junior class that Nick was talking about, obviously won the national championship. Tua came into the game replacing Dalen Hurts two years ago. Lost to Clemson last year. Didn't make the college football playoff this year. Will they be back in it next year? And will Tua be the quarterback next year? we got a long time to talk about that. Had a great year, buddy, for Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville, our entire outstanding crew. Want to remind everybody, the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual, Oregon and Wisconsin is coming up next on ESPN. Again, for Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville, I'm Dave Pash. So long from Orlando. Bam over Michigan, 35-16.